Yes, we're going. Well, that would be open to discussion. We can comment on public session. Good old this work session regular meeting of the Township Council is called to order in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, be advised that adequate notice of this work session regular meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Municipal Complex and transmitted to the officially designated newspapers a list of dates annually indicating that this work session regular meeting would take place at the Franklin Township okay, Municipal good. Complex at 7 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, May 13th, okay. 2014. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Municipal Clerk. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for the invocation, which will be given by Councilman Ted Chase. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. O oh God, the creator and redeemer of all the faithful, hear our supplications and through thy infinite love and mercy, graciously grant us the strength and power in our thoughts and decisions to be for the benefit of all people at all times. Amen. 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 Madam Clerk, please call the roll of the council. Councilman Chase. Here. Councilwoman Francois. Here. Councilman Kramer. Here. Mayor Levine. Here. Councilman Prasad. Here. Deputy Mayor Regan. Here. Councilwoman Sherman. Councilman Vassanella. Here. Councilman Wright. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We are following along on our agenda. Welcome you all here. Uh, our agendas and associated resolutions, ordinances are by our clerk, Ms. McCarthy. Please feel free and get up to get up at any time and see what's happening. If you want to follow the meeting, if you check our website, usually the weekend before the meeting, you can see our agenda. You can click on the resolutions, ordinances, and see anything about which we're going to discuss. And uh, we're always glad to have your input. So we are now at item number five on the agenda, which is commendations and proclamations. And we have one today, which is Somerset Presbyterian Church. Okay, and um, I'm going to come up to the podium. I'll be joined by Deputy Mayor Brian Regan. You're accepting on behalf of Reverend Cully and the whole congregation. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Okay. Now, this is our uh, proclamation from the mayor and council. Whereas, in 1961, Dr. Carlton C. Allen, president of the Board of Trustees of the Presbytery of New Brunswick and pastor of the Bound Book, Boundbrook Presbyterian Church recommended the establishment of a Presbyterian Church in Franklin Township near the Foxwood area. And whereas on November 3rd, 1963, the first worship service and Sunday school was held at the Pine Grove Manor School on Franklin Boulevard, Somerset. And whereas Dr. Jarvis S. Morris, who lived on East Avenue, was recommended to be the organizing pastor of this new church. Dr. Moore suggested the date of organizing the new church be May 17th, 1964, the night before the tercentenary rally of the Synod of New Jersey. 
Boston Ed, sorry, of New Jersey. <laughs> and whereas by the evening of Saturday, May 16th, 1964, there were 106 signatures on the charter roll and the church was formally organized in the gymnasium of the Pine Grove Manor School. And whereas on Sunday afternoon, May 17th, 1964, at the tercentenary rally of the Synod, Synod thank, of New Jersey in Palmer Stadium in Princeton, Somerset Presbyterian Church was declared fully organized and received into Presbytery, all before a statewide audience of 11 to 12,000, with a chorus of 1,500 singers from 68 churches. 68 Presbyterian churches. <laughs> And whereas on Sunday, May 18, 2014, Somerset Presbyterian Church will celebrate their 50th anniversary along during a special worship service at 9.30 a.m. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Brian Levine, uh, Mayor of the Township, on behalf of our entire Township Council and all the residents of Franklin Township here in Somerset County, New Jersey, do hereby congratulate Somerset Presbyterian Church on the 50th anniversary of the founding of the church in the township of Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've been a member there since 1969 to 1989. Then I moved away and came back in 2010 to present. So I'm, and why I'm up here today is because I'm the, um, what am I? The chair. I'm the chairperson. Of, uh, <laughs> thank you. There I <laughs> and on a on a personal note, it's um, the church was a great place. My my daughters both went to the nursery school there in their preschool years. Had a fantastic time there and learned a lot and. Another personal note, I, uh, I happen to be extremely fond of Reverend Cully, so uh, please send her my best, always. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you, you, know, you want to come up? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Uh, really, uh, congratulations uh, again on, on behalf of uh, the township here. Uh, I, like the mayor, my daughter and son also attended um, Somerset Presbyterian for preschool. It was a wonderful experience. And I think it's events like this in communities like, like yours that help to make Franklin a wonderful community to live in. Uh, because, you know, when you break it down, Franklin Township, for many of us, not everyone, but for many of us, it is our home. It is where we where we raise our children. Um, you know, we have uh, moments of happiness. Uh, we experience pain. All of that. Um, and it's important that we recognize these type of events and um, you know churches um, and all religious organizations that make up our wonderful community uh, of Franklin Township. So again, congratulations, and we wish you the very best. Yeah, the, t the TV, TV can't. can't pick you up. I don't want to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone, please, from our hearts, Sunday, as the mayor said, it's our 50th anniversary, 930. You are all welcome. We're going to have a super time if you all come. And also, just a little extra something, June the 7th, Saturday, at 430 to 730, we're having the best spaghetti dinner in the town. So please come hungry and eat lots of spaghetti. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. I'm hungry just I'm hungry now. I love you all. Mayor from our hearts. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless
Yes. Councilman Kramer. <laughs> You're a mind reader, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to amend the agenda. Um, I, the reason being is uh, I sense that a number of people are here about the speakers um, or the sound system considered cons being considered to be put in at Middlebush Park, um, and we have an executive session. I'd rather not have the, or I think most of us would rather not have the people wait for that executive session before they speak about that. The other issue related to that, we're having someone speak to us about the technical side of the sound system, and I thought it would be a good idea to have that before the public session. So these moves will be uh, to facilitate that. I would like to move uh, items, the executive session <coughs> number six, and the resolutions uh, to be voted on separately, number seven, to be um, essentially 13.5 on our agenda. And I would like to move 13B, I'm sorry, 13A, the sound system for Middlebush Park, to be item 7.5 um, um, on the agenda so that that will come before public discussion. So people may, the only time to speak about the speaker system will be during public discussion and anyone who wishes to speak about that will have the benefit of hearing that, that um, technical review. Okay. That's um, a motion. That's a motion. Is there a second? <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. What we have is Councilman Kramer was saying uh, we're due next to have an executive session where we meet in private, and that could take a while. And then other points of business, and he knows some peop many people are here to hear about the sound system, so he's saying, and uh, I seconded by Councilman Wright, let's move that now so that every, all of you don't, if that's what you're interested in, you don't have to wait till later. So that's going to... Assuming that motion passes, we're going to get, then go um, immediately to discuss the sound system. Uh, then we're going to do some other business and then get to our executive session. So um, then a yes vote will mean we're going to speak about the sound system right away. All right. So that's um, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Okay. So we are uh, now... Jumping on our agenda, and again, you feel free to get up at any time. It's not rude to get an agenda. We're moving to 17, pardon me, 13A, Sound System, Middlebush Park. So um, we'll start. Um, Councilman Wright, you wanted to start here? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before we bring up uh, David Krosky from uh, Krosky Electronics, I just wanted to state that Middlebush Park is part of the central athletic complex that we have here in Franklin Township. It not only serves Pop Warner football, it serves soccer that are here, and that's the various leagues of soccer. It'll service uh, baseball, softball. It'll service, which it does now with the skateboard park, um, restrooms, concession stands. This park that we are putting together will be state-of-the-art for not just three residents, four residents, but for the residents of Franklin Township. So it's not second ward, third ward versus fourth ward versus fifth ward. It's nothing about that. This is enhancing, in my opinion, some people might differ, it will enhance Franklin Township to be what it should be, which is everything, almost everything, to everyone here. Uh, so what I would like to do uh, is bring up David Krosky, and again, this brings us to the night where he will explain and expand on and give you information about the construction of that sound system, what it will do, uh, how residents will hear, not hear, the sound that bleeds off from this system, and we'll go down the road from there. So without further ado, David Krosky. Okay, Mr. Dave Kosky, who prepared our report. One, one other procedural point, um, just so you know how we're doing this. Okay, we're going to hear about the sound system. Just so you know, we are not taking a vote. We are not deciding on it tonight. This is an information session for the council. What's going to happen after Mr. Kosky 
speaks, and uh, the council will have an opportunity to make comments or ask him questions. When that's done, um, we're going to do two quick things, mayor's report, deputy mayor's report, and then we'll get to public discussion. At that public discussion, you can you know, tell us anything that's on your mind. I'll give you the, our, our basic policies for time frames, et cetera, at that point. So um, Ms. he speaks oh, out just to be from One question. Yes. I, and I wasn't paying attention, so I'm sorry. If the council had any questions for our presenter, they would be able to ask yes. him while he still at the podium. We'll oh, okay. I just want to make sure. Right, yeah. Right. That, that's a good point. Mr. After Mr. Koski's done, it'll be a council discussion with him, and then a couple quick items, and then the public can give us your opinion and ask us anything on, on this or, or any other topic. Okay, so if, if, if you'd be more comfortable s sitting at the desk, you're, you're more welcome to pull the mic out of there and... Uh, and have a seat. Okay. It's it's kind of a place of honor. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, they've never you. let me sit there. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, briefly, um, uh, Mayor, Councilmen, Councilwomen, right, and the Township people here in Franklin Township. I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to interject once more. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, Mr. Koski, you already know. But when you make your comments, they'll all be directed towards the council. Okay. Okay. Pardon me. Go right ahead. Uh, yes. Um, just to give you a brief uh, overview of our company, uh, Koski Electronic Systems is based in North Brunswick. Uh, we've been in the sound and communication systems business for uh, coming on 60 years uh, now. And uh, we do all types of sound systems in uh, churches, temples, theaters, uh, different houses of worship, uh, uh, stadiums, auditoriums. Um, and um, that's, that's pretty much what we do. We also do school intercom systems, uh, public address systems in school. So our business is primarily focused in the sound and uh, communication systems business. Uh, I'm just going to take a few minutes and kind of go over uh, briefly and talk with you all with regards to uh, a proposal um, overview of what we put together uh, with regards to uh, Middle Bush Park. Um, the, uh, the scope of work, well currently you have uh, the new fields, of, I'm going to call it field A and field B. You have a common um, press box area uh, and it's divided where one section is focused to uh, field A and another section is focused to uh, field B. Um, but just to give you an overview of what that would uh, consist of, uh, one central uh, press box is as it's pointing to uh, uh, field A, and then you have the other press box pointing over to field B. Uh, there would be a central equipment cabinet uh, located uh, in, the, um, in the press box. This would be a metal locking cabinet where all the sound equipment would reside. Uh, within that uh, rack, you would have amplifiers, uh, you would have a mixer. There would be a small little pull-out drawer to store some microphones and some cabling uh, with regards to that. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what that's all about. There will be a, a desktop microphone that would sit on top of the counter uh, so announcements can be made. Uh, and that would be incorporated with um, a wireless uh, microphone for the referee uh, as far as uh, score uh, you know, what down it is and this type of thing. Um, Excuse there me, was Mr. Kroski. Uh, you need to address council. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I do. Turning apologize. your backs to us, you, you need to address us. Yeah, okay. Just face us. Okay. Right. Let me just uh, go ahead and put this back up here. Um, the, uh, the system would consist of those components in the rack um, uh, that would all uh, reside in the equipment cabinet. Uh, there would essentially be two independent sound systems within the cabinet, one for field A and one for field B. However, everything would reside within uh, the cabinet as far as the uh, press box is concerned. Uh, the, the speaker placement is critical uh, in a project like this because there are several things that we want to address. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues, of course, is um, security. 
uh, the, uh, the speakers themselves would be mounted on the light poles uh, and uh, I would be pointing in a very tight dispersion pattern on the field itself. Uh, this will uh, minimize uh, bleed over and avoid a situation where you have uh, speaker cabinets pointing, shooting over trees and carrying for miles, uh, which um, you know uh, would be an incorrect way of installing a sound system. Um, the other advantage, of course, is the, the focus of the speaker. Since we're going to be getting the speakers up uh, in a 20 to 30 foot range, we'll be able to focus those cabinets directly on the field as opposed to, to shooting way off in the distance, um, as far as that's concerned. Um, the system will have a processor, which uh, takes care of various uh, uh, issues with regards to sound systems, feedback, uh, compression, uh, it has a parametric equalizer built into that. All those things basically are providing you with a maximum sensitivity before you would go into a, a, a feedback condition. That's what the purpose of a processor is as far as that's concerned. Um, there would be a, a CD iPod docking station in the, in, the, in the unit that would allow you to play background music uh, possibly during halftime or things of that sort. Uh, then there would be speakers, uh, there would be a total of uh, um, four speakers pointing at field A and four speakers pointing at field B. Um, two of the uh, speakers uh, on the poles left and to the right of the press box would be focused and pointing towards the bleacher area. That would allow us to have minimal energy and not to have the sound carry for a far distance. The other two speaker cabinets would be pointing directly at the field and would shoot um, onto the field over to and are focused onto the other side of the um, uh, bleacher area as far as that's concerned. And then that would also be duplicated for a uh, field B. Um, Where would that second set of speakers be located? They would also be located on the same poles. So essentially, you would have on the light pole to the left of the press box, you would actually have four speaker cabinets, two pointed towards field A and two pointing towards field B. And then on the pole to the right of the press box, you would have the same thing, two speaker cabinets pointing at field A and then two speaker cabinets pointing at field B. Um, with regards to the, um, there'll be associated hardware uh, for that. Uh, the speaker cabling will be concealed. It will be in conduit under. It will come down the poles, go under the ground, and then come up into the uh, uh, press box area, uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, the, uh, there'll also be a handheld wired microphone that would be uh, used for different uh, events, possibly for graduation or s different ceremonial events. That uh, wired microphone, there would be an outlet down at the base of the bleachers, and there would be a cable that would go out to the middle of the field. So this way you can have uh, various types of uh, presentations as far as that's concerned. Um, there'll be a microphone speaker stand, the associated cable for that. The microphone will have an on-off uh, switch so it can be shut off. And then there's also um, a wireless component to this uh, that would uh, provide a handheld microphone as well as a head-worn microphone for uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, umpire or referee or, you know, whatever is being played on the field. There is also a battery charger with the uh, wireless microphone so they can be put in the charger. And again, all this equipment can be put in the metal cabinet concealed and under a locking metal door uh, as far as that's concerned. That's pretty much an overview as far as the system is concerned. Can you speak a little bit about the way the sound will be carried? Do you have any measurements um, that you can speak to on that? Well, what we did is that we had our engineering department put together a drawing as far as the angle of dispersion is concerned. And the, the four speaker cabinets that are pointing towards field A and then pointing towards field B, uh, while the cabinets themselves physically look the same, the inside components to that cabinet are different. 
uh, there are the the angle of dispersion is really what we're concerned about. Uh, we don't want the sound bleeding and carrying far distances. So by allowing us to focus those speakers, we can bring the levels down and. Uh, basically by going with more speakers, lower energy, more focus, more concentration. Okay. So do you have a, a measurement of how far the sound will carry? Uh, dispersion, as you call it? Well, we'll be pointing, the, the angle will be pointing into the field. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of outside of the park. Do you have a feel for what the sound what levels will be like? Uh, we haven't done any type of review as far as that's concerned. Okay. Can you make it so that the people on Charles Street, which is the street most immediate adjacent to the fields, will not be able to hear the speakers? I'm talking not be able to hear. Not, not really be able to hear. I mean, sitting in their backyard having a barbecue, not be able to hear the speakers. I'd have to look at that a little more carefully with regards to the location of the speakers with regards to Charles Street. Okay. Well, uh, uh, okay. It's, um, One of the questions. You finished? Go ahead. In, in, in conjunction with his question, and I think I make it a little more pointed. If the resident lives 100 yards, 200 yards away, Phil, from where we plan on putting the speaker system, and that house is right next door, do you think they're going to hear this? I don't know the answer to that with regards to can they hear a whistle if somebody blows a whistle now. I, d I don't know how the sound would carry there um, without taking a closer look. I mean, obviously, can these uh, the p can the people on the street hear cheering and crowding without uh, you know yelling without the sound system? If they can, they would hear somewhat. Uh, they would hear something with regards to the sound system. Yes. Okay. Uh, would would it cost the town anything for you to do this analysis? Uh, I don't believe so. I can get back to you and, and tell you what, what's involved with regards to that. Okay. Now, I was looking at the polar plots of your technical information, and it seems that at low frequencies, you really can't control the sound. It's really omnidirectional. Um, I guess that's more a statement than a question. Uh, are, are there, are there, are, did I interpret that correctly, I guess, is the... Um, question that uh, seemed at 250 hertz these are omnidirectional speakers well they are directional uh, but your, your statement is is correct lower frequencies have a tendency to be more omnidirectional than higher frequencies but these cabinets are horn loaded so we are able to direct the sound uh, the manufacturer is a product called community uh, which is a most outdoor uh, uh, arenas stadiums high school fields recreational fields, that type of thing. So I, in, it seems to me, if we take the extreme, if we had one big speaker, that would be very hard to limit the sound. At the other end, if this were a drive-in movie theater where every participant had their own speaker, it would be extremely easy to limit the sound. I would also guess the more speakers, the more expensive. Is there perhaps a, another system beyond what you considered where we would have more speakers? I'm just going to pick a number out of nowhere, 10 speakers, that, so that the volumes of each speaker would be lower and we would reduce the sound print, or I think it's called audio leak, is that the right term, even more? Well, the, an increase in the number of speakers will obviously allow you to have more focus and more direction, bringing the energy level down. Uh, the less speakers, the more you have to increase the levels to, to, to get a, a satisfactory result. Uh, we believe that with the proposal that we put together, uh, that two of the speakers are focusing directly in the bleacher area and two uh, out into the field angled in a downward fashion uh, will do the trick. Uh, with regards to your question, regarding Charles Street, uh, that would be something I would need to take a closer look at. And my last question would be, um, when we do things like towers, like we're going to put up a big tower, we do something called a balloon test where, or a crane test where we have 
something up there at the height of the structure so people from around could see how high it would be. The analogous thing here would be some kind of speaker test or field test of some type where you would, I shouldn't say you, whoever got the contract, I would think, would set up the speaker system, a speaker system, so that people around could hear it and then be able to judge for themselves in a temporary way. Have you ever done such a thing? What we typically do is during an installation where we're involved with the equalization, uh, we have microphones out on the field measuring uh, the level uh, and the angle that we're focusing on. But that's after a contract's already been... Correct. And But is there any... Have you ever done such a thing where before, as part of the bid process or part of the, the whole process of deciding whether the town the facility was going to put in a speaker system that you do some type of field test? Uh, no, I personally have not, no. Okay. Thank you. I have one small Councilman little Ray, question. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go. Go, go right ahead. ahead. Um, small little test. When you said that you have done work in and around uh, the town, excuse me, in the state, uh, could you give us some examples of where you worked uh, and what type of projects they were? Yes, we've done a complete full range of uh, sound systems from Atlantic City Airport to Newark Airport, uh, the old Giant Stadium we did some work at, um, uh, hundreds of uh, high school football fields throughout the state, uh, uh, churches, churches. Um, uh, well, let me interrupt. You said churches. What do you do with churches? Well, we install sound systems, audiovisual projection systems in uh, different churches uh, throughout the state. Okay. You ever do any work over our favorite little place called Rutgers? Uh, yes, we have, as a matter of fact. Um, we've done a lot of work at the football stadium, as well as all of the uh, uh, events there, all the, 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 uh, the baseball fields, the basketball arena, uh, the soccer fields, uh, the pool, uh, Sunny Warbling Recreation Center. We've done work in, in all of those facilities. This isn't a truck. Okay. Improvements track record. Okay, other questions? Councilman Prasad. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Koski, you live in North Brunswick, I take it. I'm said. originally from North Brunswick. We're okay. North Brunswick. I live out in Monmouth County now. Okay, but your company's based in North Brunswick? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, are you familiar with Sabella Park? Uh, no, I am not. Okay. Uh, that was a whole new refurbished park that the township of North Brunswick upgraded. And they have lighting, and they also have a sound system, and they have active recreation there, and a lot of kids there. And I wonder if the sound system there is comparable to what you're proposing here. And number two, if we could find out somehow if there are any complaints from the neighbors about the sound system that's in use at Sibylla Park. Uh, and the reason why I say that is that, you know, if there's a comparable system and we've got experience, we can look at what their experience has been and then based on that, uh, you know, decide what kind of system we want and how less obtrusive and, uh, you know, invasive uh, would it be to implement something like that. And so it's a, it's a balance that we have to find between providing quality uh, recreational facilities uh, for our residents and our children mostly and at the same time, we cannot invade the privacy and, and uh, security of uh, our uh, residents. So it is a balance that we have to find. But I think we can learn from the Sabela Park experience, which is a beautiful park. Uh, and they've done very well in, in North Brunswick. And so if somebody can find that out and, you know, research that, uh, I would love to have that information before we make this decision. I'll get some answers on that for you. And okay. there are some other facilities in the area that, um, you know, we could take a look at that would be similar so. to what we're proposing here. Well, that's my question. If you've got something similar to what you've done, uh, you're proposing with us, 
and it's already in place, then let's find out what the experience has been. And, uh, you know, if, if it's invaded the privacy and security or not, what's been the experience, what are the neighboring homes saying about it, and uh, overall we can also see what the users of the recreational facility feel about the, the facility. So it's a balance between the two, and, and we've got to find that happy medium here. I so understand. if you could help us out with that information, we would appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Koski. Okay. Um, okay. Councilman Vasnell. I, I think Councilman Prasad asked him, but let me just ask you this. Is there a similar system you guys have, have you put in this, this system or one very similar somewhere else? Yes. Okay, where is that? Uh, we have a system similar to that at East Brunswick High School. East Brunswick High School. Uh, Liberty Stadium down in Jackson at Liberty High School. Okay. Um, we have some state, uh, systems up north that we've done that would be the same type of amplification and speaker okay. cabinets that we could take a look at. So uh, can you send us a list? And I welcome you, uh, you know, Councilman Kramer and others have been asking about going out or talking about going over here. But in the meanwhile, can you just send us a list of where this system's installed? And um, I'm wondering if we could be provided, uh, I don't know, Bob, who would, you, you can give us that, the distances we're talking about. So maybe one of, if any of us council people wanted to go over to East Brunswick, I don't know when they're operational, meaning I don't know when they're using loudspeaker, but um, mm. then we can go and mm. get a better sense. I mean, it, it, I'm not saying testing and your reporting is irrelevant. I, I'm happy, I'm, we're all happy to hear whatever you have to say, but if people are concerned of what it sounds like, we should just go listen to a system and we get a better idea. Of course. The, um, does that I, make sense? It's very, okay. very doable. G great. And, and just curiously, um, I know every situation is different, but in your professional experience, is there an average amount of, of feet you know, 500 feet, 2,000 feet, 300 feet, that is acceptable standard where the systems are and relevant and in relation to people's homes. Because um, obviously you've had to deal with this issue before, well, right? Well, we, we've dealt with this issue regarding public address systems in schools where you have outside paging horns and the classroom bells change and then the neighbors can hear that in areas where it's a very tight situation. You know, in those types of situations, we put an on-off switch on the rack, so this way it's not heard, you know, on weekends or in the evenings and that type of thing. So um, there's control. There's control mechanisms in, you could put into place. There are some, yes. Okay. And any information you have on that is when you send the list of the, where the sites are would be okay. appreciated. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. okay. Follow-up. Prasad? Yeah, the more I thought about it, uh, uh, is there any programming capability that you have that can control the decibels of, of the sound system, number one. Number two, the timing in which the system is operational uh, so that, you know, it's within the sound ordinances, noise ordinances, and uh, of the township, and people are in compliance uh, with that. The system itself is a fail-safe system that it's already programmed and nobody can uh, change that unless... Yes, once it's programmed, it's uh, under a... Uh, there are security panels, it's locked out, uh, right. which would control the levels. Uh, people can't just get in there and just start cranking it up. It doesn't work okay. that way. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, that's what I meant. So it has got to be within the noise ordinances, uh, allowable limits and acceptable limits for the whole town. And so that has to be there. And then, of course, the timing of it uh, yes. uh, and, and loudness. And so now, is that also possible with, I, I, I take it you're also bidding on the lighting system or? No. No, uh, that's just a, oh, there, there, there. Okay. 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 Yeah, well. So, yeah. all right. So, so it's just the sound system. So yes. if there's programmable, just let us know okay. if that can be done. Or if you know the answer, let us know now. Well, as far as the timing is concerned, you, there are things you can do as far as shutting the system off after a certain hour, uh, right. as far as that's concerned. As far as the levels are concerned, uh, that can be controlled. Um, you know, obviously, what we want to be able to do is to provide uh, the proper coverage at the minimal level as possible, so this way it doesn't, uh, it, it does address the concerns that you have uh, with, with uh, the residents in the town. Right. Okay. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Councilman Wright. Uh, just to go th go to the point that Councilman Prasad just brought up, and I thought, man, I want to make sure I understand that. You just asked for was there a way to automatically shut off the system? And no, all, at a certain time, like after 11 p.m., when the I ordinance to, yeah. noise ordinance says you will not have loud, loud noise after 11 p.m. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. Okay. Thank so you at much. 11 o'clock. System I just want to clarify that yeah. little issue. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever the ordinance but, says. Whatever the ordinance says. I'm with you. Thank okay. you. And the decibel levels. I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So other whatever it is, we program it to that. Okay. Other questions, comments from council members? So, so I think the point here is we just really want to know how far the sound carries, what's the distance of the sound, depending on what noise levels it's at. That's the concern. But we all feel that, well, I shouldn't say we all, some of us feel we need the system. So we just want to make sure we're clear on its capabilities. Understand. Okay. Okay. We appreciate you taking the time here. Anything else? Oh, pardon me, Councilman Kramer. Uh, the question I always ask, money. Uh, and I know you're not going to be able to give an exact amount, but just if you could put us, no pun intended, in the ballpark, 5,000, 20,000, 100,000, can you can you do that or, or not yet? We have a bid. And 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 now it'll be in public. Uh, the the quote is somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, I believe it's twenty five thousand dollars. Thank. You. Okay. Thank you. For everything. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. If nothing else, uh, we appreciate it. If a few questions were leveled at you, if you can. If it's within your purview to get that information, thank you very much. I certainly will. Uh, now your, your contact is always will be Mr. Vornlocker. Okay. Our town manager. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I yes, can write Council quick. Councilman Wright, please. Um, one of the things that we have done and we continue to do is that this is, and I hate to put it this way, but this is a moneymaker also because we have asked other institutions other schools, other organizations have asked to use the field. So when we look at what we're doing, let's be mindful that the fees that are generated are not just thrown away, they're used for the maintenance of the park. And as such, that cuts down on the other uh, monies that we use for maintenance, uh, uh, for repair, uh, for staffing. So, you know, these, this type of park being a centerpiece of this whole puzzle that we put together, it does us good. It, it provides funds for us, the recreation department, and it moves us closer to be able to do what we need to do in this township. And with that, I'm going to leave it all alone. Okay, thank you. Okay, that concludes this. Again, a uh, procedural point. Um, we had moved item 13A to discuss now. Uh, what we're going to do is then um, quickly have the mayor's report, deputy mayor's report, and then open it up for public discussion where you can tell us anything that is on your mind. And I'll give you our uh, parameters and uh, time frames uh, when we get to there in a couple minutes. So now it's the, uh, the mayor's report. And being cognizant, we have a long agenda. I'll. Uh, and be brief. My mug today says, get Rutgers, GSM, Graduate School of Management, now called the Graduate School of Business. I got this when I graduated there. And uh, though you know I love Rutgers dearly, they've uh, been having a few issues lately. They've uh, controversy on their commencement speaker. They invited someone. It was in the paper that someone else was invited. And um, they're... Uh, it's a, uh, I think they're having trouble getting their act together a little bit. So I implore them, our neighbors, to uh, please be more cognizant and professional in their approaches to things and everything from their sports departments and their uh, comments and things from their athletic director and others have not served us well in the public eye. So that's my plea to them. So we are, here's how the meeting goes. We're following along on our agenda. Generally, 
Our meetings are the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. The exception is July, August, and December when we only have meetings on the second Tuesday of the month. And there will be an exception in June. Instead of the second Tuesday, the meeting will be on the first Thursday, the fifth. And then uh, we'll get back into the normal schedule of things. So um, be cognizant of that, please. Uh, as I said in a moment, we're going to get to public discussion. That's the only time members of the public can speak of something on a general nature. Later on, there'll be chances to speak, but it's going to be on particular ordinances. So if you want to speak, that's going to be in a, in a couple of moments. Uh, a couple of things around town. Uh, Willow Creek here on East Avenue had their National Nurses Week. That was a great celebration. They, uh, they named me Guest of Honor, though I really didn't do much there. It was nurses who were really the people who did all the work. I am um, now on the board of directors of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. But big congratulations to our neighbor, Mayor Ray Heck in Millstone, who is now the first vice president, and a year from now will be the president of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. There's 565 towns, and our neighbor in Somerset County will be the president. You can inundate him with things you want to do in the state. Another big congratulations goes to our police chief, Larry Roberts. He is now the vice president of the New Jersey Chiefs of Police Association. And I'm sure he could have been the president, though he's committed to the town. So he took the vice presidential role so he could give us his service. So thank you for that. Uh, on a personal note, also, Red Tape Review Commission is appointed by the governor. And lieutenant governor has been renewed. I'm still a member there. And also, in June, comes the primary election. If you are registered in either of the major parties, Democratic or Republican, be good for you to go out and vote. Again, in November is, of course, the general election. And that's all I have on the mayor's report. So now we have the deputy mayor's report from Deputy Mayor Brian Regan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight uh, is a very important council meeting uh, because tonight we um, we hopefully will vote for and accept our municipal budget for calendar year 2014. Uh, tonight I will use my deputy mayor's report to encourage all my fellow peers, councilmen, and the mayor to support and pass the adoption of this budget. Uh, this budget has been a work in progress uh, since actually probably around November of last year where our township manager got together with his directors and they put together by at a departmental uh, area their budgets uh, there was filtering and prodding and poking done it at that level and then Bob uh, took it to the financial oversight starting in January where there was a whole nother level set of poking and prodding at it by members of the financial oversight committee. And then in March, for four nights, uh, there was poking and prodding of that budget uh, by all members of council. Um, this budget uh, will introduce uh, the, the actual operating accounts for the township. Uh, it will be uh, a 1.9% increase over our current our calendar year. 2013. Um, as I indicated, hundreds of staff hours went into this budget. Uh, this budget, in my opinion, is a very good and stable budget. Uh, I believe that the members of council, this township uh, council, um, are working in um, true stewardship in trying to really utilize the funds to the best, exp best possible pr uh, and productive as possible as we could be. Uh, with the use of the revenues that we generate, commonly referred to a very nasty word called taxes. Uh, but that's how we generate that, that revenue. Um, but how we spend it, you know, some people can argue, but I can, I can assure you that each member of uh, council up here um, has really done their best to look at that, that budget and has provided their input. Uh, tonight, obviously, we'll, we'll have public input on it, but I truly believe, and I use that word stewardship because that's what this is about. This is about 
the funds that come from our residents, from our, our um, residents, homeowners, corporations, giving it to the council so that we can best utilize it for, for this town. Um, and a significant amount of that goes to expenses associated with salaries, pensions, health benefits, uh, the daily operations of this town. Uh, and a, a significant part of that is allocated to infrastructure, roads, public works department. Um, I'm sure all of us have still in our memories um, the very real memory of this past winter uh, where we spent three times what we normally would on snow collection. Uh, fortunately, this this, finance, uh, this uh, township council um, has been financially responsible over the years and we have been allocating funds to our snow collection trust fund so that this year we had money. We, we didn't go broke because of snow collection because we allocated enough mom money in the equivalent of a savings account to be able to address that need. Uh, and we continue to strive to have a uh, an acceptable savings account just like any household would uh, so that we could pay our normal expenses and also have money in case of uh, emergencies that we are just we cannot anticipate uh, so today this budget <coughs> will re will result basically in a four percent increase over last year's budget I know for some that that may seem high but again I, I can assure you that we worked very hard to keep that as low as possible. Um, due to the cap laws and, and, and state ordinance, we actually could have went to 5.91% uh, of an increase without exceeding the caps. And we, and we did our best uh, to ensure that we were not taxing to the max that we were allowed. We, we came to and settled on a number of 4%. Uh, with that, so what does that mean to the average homeowner? Uh, that means to the average homeowner, uh, approximately a $41.68% increase over last year for a home that, uh, I'm sorry, oh, I did say percent, sorry, $41.68, $41.68 uh, increase for a home that is assessed at a little over $300,000, $306,000 is the average homeowner. So again, I know that for some of our residents, they struggle uh, on a day to day to make their payments, but, and you'll have your opportunity to, uh, to provide comments and feedback on that. But I do want you to know that we worked very hard to keep that tax increase as low as possible, understanding that we provide services to a township as large as ours, over 63,000 residents. Uh, the harsh reality, it does cost money to, to run this town for the size that we are and to keep it running efficiently. Uh, so I hope uh, that if you've gotten the chance to review that budget, because I actually don't have the book because I no longer have the strength to carry it. Uh, it's fairly thick, uh, but it's very detailed. And again, there is no one, well, Mr. Vaughn Locker, our township manager, he knows it in pretty good detail, and so does our CFO. Uh, but you know, no one council person knows it line by line. It's just too large. Um, but we have gone through it in significant times and in, in uh, significant detail to believe that it is the best budget that we can put forward to you, the public, uh, this year. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, with that, um, I thank you for, uh, uh, for turning it over to me. Oh. Yes, uh, Councilman Wright. Okay. You want to Councilman that? Chase has his book present, so. and he just wanted to show you how thick that so, book was. This is a fairly large one. Uh, we have <laughs> we have not memorized every line in here uh, or every dollar figure, every line. but uh, we have gone through it, and pretty much a number of us have gone through every page in that document. Okay, thank you. You know, actually, one thing I was going to say, I'm going to take liberty of interjecting. Forgot new we um, which will help us out a little. In Franklin, we got a grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation, just came through to us, for $250,000 to help resurface JFK Boulevard. So add to our, add to our town. 
So that concludes the mayor's report, the deputy mayor's report. So now we're at public discussion. So um, in a moment, we'll open it to the public. And um, what I'll ask you to do is raise your hand, and when I call on you, come to the microphone, give us your name and address. And please note we're being audio recorded, we're being video recorded. And as is our policy, people come up once per meeting, and uh, we have five minutes per person, and uh, there's a timer, so when you hear a tone goes off, uh, that means three minutes has elapsed. When you hear multiple tones, that means five minutes has elapsed. And uh, then I'll ask you to wrap up your thoughts. Uh, if you want to pose questions to us, feel free. If you want to make a comment, you can do that also. And um, I think that pretty much covers it. When you come to the podium, please direct all of your comments to the council. And uh, when you stand next to the microphone, keep yourself about three or four inches away. That way we pick it up clearly. So then uh, again, there'll be a couple other times to speak this meeting, uh, but that's going to be on particular ordinances. So this is time to speak of something of a general nature. So is there a motion to open the meeting for public discussion? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Meeting is open for public discussion on any item of interest which does not have a public hearing of its own. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. When I recognize you, please come to the podium. Give us your name and address. Mr. LaCourt. I'm going to be brief because it's uh, about our Memorial Day parade. It's Bob LaCourt, 265 South Middlebush Road. I'm here tonight to invite Council, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, residents of Franklin Township to our Memorial Day Parade Monday, May 26th at 11 a.m. Uh, this year will be the 70th anniversary of D-Day, June 6th, 1944. We're losing 3,000 World War II vets a day, so it would be I thought it would be nice to uh, have the veterans, all branches, all services, all wars, those who are living, those who have um, passed. I know my wife's father was in World War II. He just passed in November. To thank them uh, for their service and to our country, our freedoms, Free speech, everything that we have. Uh, we're going to have a parade where we're going to have a lot of different folks who have contacted me who want to be in the parade. And I hope that uh, everyone can come, enjoy the parade, stay for the services. Uh, we have some really interesting group. We have the J Rock, Roxy, which is the uh, Franklin High School Junior ROTC. They're going to be there along, I believe, I got the police department will be the um, honor guard, and I hope that all of you can come, enjoy again the parade, and stay for the ceremony. Thank you. M Mr. LaCour, could you, in case anyone wants to view it, can you tell us the route? All right, it's, uh, the, the staging area is going to be on New Brunswick Road between the golf course and the corner of DeMott and um, New Brunswick, and we'll travel up to the uh, municipal building here to the Veterans Memorial. So it's about a mile walk. And then you'll have a ceremony at the municipal... The ceremony uh, will be room. at the municipal building. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Okay. Mr. Tibbs. I'm sorry. Oh, I think the long way is fine. It's for you. I'll be very brief. Uh, John A. Tibbs, 25 Parkside. Uh, just briefly. Um, Since you guys have been elected, Bill, I think that most of the town, <laughs> except your uh, tenacity and expertise in uh, 
pulling out the Franklin Township budget. And I want to tell you that we all concur and hopefully that it was done well. And sick as that book is, I know you guys, you guys did a good job. So I'm proud of you. I'm, I have to tell you that and the community is proud of you. The job that you've done. And I know you got into it because you know we were looking. So I want to say that much to you for the, in terms of budget. Uh, the couple things I've seen a couple of you guys about things I'm doing now. And um, there's one particular thing that's, that I have an interest in, and I don't know the route it is. As you know, one of our members of Parkside. Uh, was killed uh, over the weekend, I mean last weekend, uh, is, uh, we had a death in the community. Now this young man was born and raised in Parkside, and in the park in which he was found uh, dead, they want to create a memorial beside one of the trees that I got them put into the park. Remember back at the tree period? One of those trees, they want to make a memorial around that particular tree. Now, uh, Mr. Hornlocker, I know that I don't want to get into no thing about how we'd be able to do that, if that's possible now. But I wish that you guys would guide me and tell me if that is possible for them to make a memorial for Mr. Um, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Lyons, Mr. Lyons, Mr. Larry Lyons if that is possible, around a particular tree. We know already about some of the stuff, I've already told them that some of the, some of the blooms and so forth have to be moved from around the, uh, the casing in which they keep the, the playgrounds kids uh, uh, equipment in for the uh, summer program. We know that has to be moved. But there's a tree next to that that they want to do that. So I wish you guys would advise me in terms of what I could tell the rest of the community if that could happen or not. Okay? Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Yes, Mr. Gale. Hi, Tom Gale, 14 Ford Avenue. Um, I want to thank you for uh, your efforts on the budget and keeping our taxes as low as possible while doing as much as you possibly can. Um, I'm here tonight kind of reluctantly. Um, you have something on the agenda and the consent agenda that, that uh, I'd hope that you could address. Um, it's kind of ironic because it's related to the issues that you're concerned about for um, the sound system that's going into Middlebush Park. Um, what I'm talking about is W. It's a special permit for uh, a festival that goes on uh, June 6th, 7th, and 8th at the corner of Franklin Boulevard and Easton Avenue. Um, that's my neighborhood. Um, it's been going on for a number of years. Uh, I've come before uh, with issues, and yeah, I think you've tried to address it, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, you're fully... I'm trying to understand why there hasn't been um, a change. Um, and I, I look at the application, and I see that it's listed that there's 200 maximum people uh, as attendants on the application. And that's so far from the truth, uh, it, it's disturbing. On their own website, the church says that, and I quote, that last year, last year's festival was a well-attended and highly publicized event drawing thousands of guests and visitors. That's maybe a little hyperbole, but that's closer to the truth. Every night, there's six to a thousand people cramming onto the parking lot of the church. They use their whole lot for the festival. And so all the, traf the traffic that they generate either has to find a place to park in the neighboring uh, doctor's office, which has a very limited space, or they use our streets. Um, I know the police department in the past has tried to control that somewhat by posting signs. Uh, they, it kind of is an inconvenience to the residents because they uh, disallow parking on one side of the street. But if they didn't do that, it would turn our neighborhood streets into one-way roadways on a two-way uh, street. So um, for, the, for the safety, I, I think that needs to be done. Um, problem is that there's, the signs go up, but then there isn't quite the enforcement that 
needs to be there. There's constantly people parking illegally. Um, and it becomes an issue on our street, particularly on Ford Avenue. Uh, it's a dead end street. There's, it's not a cul-de-sac even, it's just a dead end street. There's a, a guardrail at the end of the street. So uh, there's maybe 10 places on the street. Uh, they fill up early. Then for the rest of the night, it's like 287. People driving down because they can't see the end of the street, realizing there's no traffic uh, parking and have to come zipping back up and finding another place. Some people get creative. At the end of the street, they'll park head into the guardrail and until they block the only fire hydrant in our area is down at the end of the street. They'll block the fire hydrant. So it becomes a, a matter of public safety. Um, the other issue is the sound. Uh, it's Saturday night, Sunday night, they have a live band that uses amplify, amplification to perform. Uh, it's very loud. It, uh, I know you've said that has to comply with the, the sound ordinance, but from my understanding, it nowhere near complies with the sound ordinance. I know there's supposed to be enforcement. I don't think there's enforcement. I'd like to see, uh, well, the problem is numbers to start with. Um, and I don't know how, it's a, it's a free and open, uh, unrestricted, ungated uh, event. Anybody can come and go as they like. They pass through our neighborhoods after they park and they pass back. Um, controlling the numbers may be a, a benefit to one of the issues in the traffic. But the sound, I don't know, unless there's regular periodic checks, set the sound system at the start of the event and do periodic checks throughout the night. Um, I can't, you know, I, I look at the sound ordinance. It says 65 to to decibels during the night. I look at what that I don't know what that means, but I go online and find a chart. That's between a conversation and a vacuum cleaner. This is a disco concert. It's up around 100, according to the chart, 100 decibels. It far exceeds what the, 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 the ordinance allows. So uh, at after 10 o'clock, which it never changes, it goes on until 11 o'clock, the same volume, it's supposed to go down to, to indoor 40 decibels. That's a described as a quiet library. It never happens. So. I just ask for some assistance. Um, I know you want to balance both sides, but I think we need some protections, the same protections that you're offering the, the Middle Bush people too. Just, we need some assistance. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now, Mr. Vornlocker, you'll keep, keep your eye closely as you, as you did when you were the traffic officer. I will. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you. Yes. Oh, Ms. Rea, go ahead, and then you can, you can go after. Okay. Um, I sure wish that conversation didn't come up when I was here. Um, but so far as this festival goes, number one, controlling the people. That's how they Just make... Your, your name and address, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. Rea, Rea, Wilson Road. Okay, um, thanks. These people truly give of their time talent and treasure and they do a lot of work to get this festival together it is three days once a year they have moved the band so that it's facing Easton Avenue they try to comply with every rule that's out there they are not going till 11 o'clock they are shut down way before 10 actually and um, you know they they swing their doors open and they say you know come in see what we're about see this culture and it's kind of nice that you know the town can go see what they're like so um you're going to make the decisions you're going to make but i just hope you realize these are really good people who are working hard to have their festival and it just so happens that their culture is that and it's you know really friday and saturday night where the music is of any bother whatsoever to mr gale okay now, the soccer, football, Middle Bush Park. I love soccer. I've got three nephews that were all soccer heads, one niece that was a soccer head. I have been to so many soccer parks. It's amazing. Um, football, I love football. My nephew's on University of Arkansas. So it is not that I don't like children. It is not that I don't like the sports. Um, but these are sports for 
just particular children. It's not all children. We don't have the gymnasts out there. We don't have the swimmers out there. We don't have the hockey players. This is for a couple of sports. And a tournament park, I would love a tournament park. It's beautiful. The landscape is beautiful. I don't think this was a good place. I've said it before, and I've heard people say, well, nobody complained before. Well, there were lines out the door <laughs> for several meetings for I don't know how many years saying, please don't do this, and then other people dragging their kids up here saying it's for the kids and there's rocks. And Anyway, um, and I don't see why we have to pay for this. These parks make so much money, these soccer parks. Why are, why are tax payers paying for this? I mean, you said it yourself that they bring in a lot of money, and it's great, but, you know, it should be on a... a homes got built around the park. The homes were already there. We liked a peaceful lifestyle. That's why we're there. I want to hear the creek across the street. I want to hear it babble away. I want to hear the bullfrog. I don't want to hear, I mean, if it's a bullhorn, it's going to annoy me all the time. Um, and again, it's spring, summer, and fall. There's going to be no break from this. And I can guarantee you they're going to be yapping away before 10 on a Sunday. Do I have to shut up? I heard a ding. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, and like we talked about balance and, and complaints and, and, well, when there was one there, did the residents complain? What are we supposed to do once you've already bulldozed us, bulldozed us and put the park in and put the speakers in? Am I supposed to call the police every time? It annoys me. I'm not going to do that. And neither are other residents of North Brunswick, South Brunswick, or any other town. So that's just a, a silly, silly thing to think about. The other thing is, are you going to test this thing and the decimals with the wind? I, I, I don't know that you really can do this. Um, and then uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was Because a number of times, like more than four times, when I've gone down that road, I've seen some crazy stuff occurring right there where the trails oh. cross. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Vorlocker, you want I, to I, that one? Just on the last item I can address. So, number one, the, the trail that goes across South Middlebush Road at Six Mile Run is, is part of the state park system, not the township's uh, park system. Um, we have tried to work with the, the DNR Canal State Park in Six Mile Run. It's the same superintendent. It, it is not as easy as one would think. We also bring into another issue here the jurisdiction of the roadway, which is Somerset County. Um, there, there was um, some agreement that, that uh, advance warning signs for that trail be put up, and, and they should be put up in the relatively near future. Um, and, and, and this council has discussed it at, in various committees. We, we are funding the signs because that's the only way that they would get put up. Um, and, uh, but there is some work that needs to be done as far as a, what's called a mid-block crosswalk, which will be striped on the road. It's, it's something that you just can't go out and take a can of paint and do. Uh, but it and then additionally bollards were put up to stop the bicycles from shooting straight across the road so that they actually have to come to a stop okay yeah go ahead name an address and yes. let us know what's uh, on your mind Gloria Renner I live on Franklin Boulevard and I'm here about the resolution 14 246 authorizing the permit for the special event uh, on the weekend of June 6th through 8th. I've been living in the area for several years now, and um, I have nothing wrong with the festival. I even... I think it needs another venue. There are... There must be a thousand people every day. Every day there must be like a thousand people there. Oh, okay. And um, also... Um, there was, you know, the, the traffic is a problem. By anybody. 
However, this has turned into parking for the people who attend the festival. The signs clearly state, we can't park in front of our house. The signs clearly state, no parking. And people park. Um, there was one person last year who parked partially blocking my driveway, and I pointed to the sign. Attorney, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to get in a fight with anybody. But um, there's a lot of arrogance, um, a lot of um, th just ignoring the no parking signs, and then the neighbors are being inconvenienced. So I believe this has grown too big to be at the location where it's at, and. Uh, It is very loud. I have to close my windows, turn on my air conditioner, and I still, my, my, my walls vibrate. And um, it is a problem. And um, the other thing is curfew, noise curfew is not being adhered to. Um, Sunday, I'll grant you that, Sunday, 10 o'clock sharp, the music stops. But Friday evening and Saturday evening, midnight, easily, and, you know, it's, if they tone down the volume, I'd have no problem with it. But full volume, much more than I believe is what's allowed. And um, I just, uh, and I've also called the police about the parkers. Response was slow, minimal, non-existent. So, um, you know, there is, it is a problem, you know, and granted, it's only once a year for three days, but that's three days I can't have company. <laughs> they can't park anywhere, um, you know, so that's my two cents. No, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. What else? My name is Catherine Samini. I'm a homeowner. Home owner in this town. In fact, this week uh, marks my 20th anniversary of purchasing my home at 19 Hunters Crossing Road. I am precisely 0.6 miles away from this building. I know that because I, I run and I walk and I bike. I'm also a business owner. Not quite so close. I'm over on World's Fair Drive. I recall the horse farm. I've been living in this township that long. I have 20 years in my house, I just said that. Five years before that, I lived at Quail Brook at 304 Schilling Drive, and actually I could hear the horse farm from 304 Schilling Drive. So when the horse farm left, I was a little sad. I moved over to Hunter's Crossing. It's pretty quiet. I have been in Franklin Township. I have been around Franklin Township for an awfully long time. I came to New Jersey in 1982. I attended Rutgers Graduate School. I have my PhD from Rutgers. My entire time working on my PhD from 1982 to 1989, I spent working in recreation departments. I worked in New Brunswick, coaching and officiating soccer. I worked in Franklin Township. I worked at SGS, coaching the basketball, middle, sc middle school basketball program on Saturday morning. I officiated basketball in Piscataway. I supervised the adult men's softball league here in Franklin Township for three years, and I officiated in that softball league. I've been around kids. I've been around athletics. I have been around lots of places. I have never had a sound system. They heard me. Never had a sound system. Now, the world's different today. Got to be really fancy, and I'm telling you, that park is beautiful. I like the park. I, I like the horses, but the horses left. <laughs> the park is beautiful, and I walk to it. I actually walk over there with my dogs. I walk over there and watch the kids play. I want you to know, and I'm going to tell you, before I tell you this piece of information, I want you to know I just recently went for a hearing test because I'm saying a lot. What would you say? Hmm? What would you say? I have lost 40% of my hearing in both ears. Both ears. But it's a genetic thing. Nothing I can do about it. I can hear the kids when they're playing in my backyard 
on Hunter's Crossing Road. I can hear the kids hooting and hollering. I can hear the shouting. And it's pleasant. It's in the background. It's pleasant. I'm very concerned about a speaker system. I'm really concerned about music at halftime, about announcements. That's going to disturb my peace and quiet, totally. I also want to say I am exceedingly disturbed about the fact that this gentleman came here today to convince you to purchase his system, I presume, since he's doing a presentation, and he cannot answer a simple couple of questions that should have been obvious to anyone about a sound system. How far is the sound going to tra travel? How far? Who's going to hear it? He's talking about what we're going to direct, we're going to this, we're going to that, but basically he did not answer your question. He dodged a bullet. He dumped, he bumped, he moved, he bustled around, but he did not answer your question. And he didn't consider it. And have they ever done a program like this before? Have they ever done a test before, you asked? He's like, well, gee, I don't know. I guess we could. Oh, come on. This was $25,000 to their company, and they didn't think about that before? I would say i got to worry about that company. OK, last thing about the price tag. $25,000, that's a big number. It's not the biggest number in the world, of course. I have to say, <laughs> as a previous coach, official, Franklin Township employee working for the Recreation Department. I got to tell you, I bet you could spend that $25,000 more wisely within the Franklin Township Recreation Department. I tell you, you will disturb my peace and quiet because I hear those kids and I've lost 40% of my hearing. That's documented. I hear those kids in my backyard. I don't disturb, I'm not disturbed by the kids. They're laughing. They're playing. They're having a good time. They're cheering. It's kind of sweet. But I'm going to be disturbed when I start hearing rap music at halftime. And I'm going to be mighty disturbed when I keep hearing Go! every five minutes when I'm trying to listen to Dan Fogelberg. Just told you how old I was. OK, thank you. OK, anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, and then you, then you, you can line up. You can go after him. Go ahead. All right. Good evening. Um, Neil Strotman, 21 Gogan Way. A little close. Sorry. Thanks. Um, and I, I live right next to uh, Middle Bush Park, um, as about two hundred other residents do. Um, I have a clear line of sight now since trees have been removed to that field. And you better believe I hear whatever kids are out there playing. Um, it's, it's not bad when it's kids just playing. It's, it's a pleasant sound. It's nice background noise. That's very different than having loudspeakers. It's going to make it unpleasant for us to be in our backyard. Um, we can hear kids when we're inside our house. We're certainly going to be able to hear loudspeakers when we're there. I understand that this park is very necessary for the town. I understand it's a very nice facility, but I don't think that loudspeakers are part are, are a necessary part of this. I don't think that the park can't be enjoyed by the township if it doesn't have loudspeakers. I think my yard can't really be enjoyed by me if there's this noise. And the, and the other 200 residents in the area are, are, are experiencing the same problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and then you, and then you can come up. Yeah, you, you can go. Good. All right. Yeah. Coach. Good evening. My name is Keith Stewart. I live at 26 Atlantic Road. I am also chairman of the advisory uh, rec council. Um, heard a lot of people talk about noise. There's all kinds of noise in our diverse community. I could say that I hear the noise from the St. Matthias Carnival. I could say that I hear the noise from the Somerset Presbyterian yard sale. I could say I hear the noise from the Rutgers Canyons. I could say that I'm probably going to hear a noise from uh, First Baptist's uh, biker prayer this Sunday. There's all kind of noise that we hear in this community because we are a diverse community. I'm sure certain festivals, you have Diwali Festival, I'm sure there are places in Franklin where at the, during that time in October, November, you hear festival noise. 
I live near Franklin Boulevard and Eastern Avenue. There's a festival. How you could come up here and advocate for the noise of your festival and then say you want to hear frogs and crickets and other things instead of kids baffles me, but that's your own prerogative. We are here as adults in this community, you here as officials to provide the best environment for the entire community. Everybody is affected by other people in their communities, in I, lawnmowers, dogs. There are noises living in a community. If you want to live someplace where you don't hear other people living, go to where other people are not living. We live at schools. You, people at the high school, if there are high school events, there, there's noise from high school events. If you go to middle school events, there are middle school events. The middle school football field has had football games for, what, 30 years? You can jump out of the stands at, at the middle school into people's backyards. There is no buffer. There is no tree line. There is no noise control. We live in a community that is diverse, and we celebrate that diversity. This sound system is just one more piece of a beautiful facility that we have fought to get to provide for the children, the seniors, it, all kinds of activities. It's not just a sports complex. There is There are basketball courts. There are going to be uh, softball fields. There is a playground. There's all kinds of facilities. There's all kinds of things. As far as paths, we have paid into the Open Space Trust Fund. We have put that money towards open space. This township has miles and miles and miles of open space. It is time for us to stop piecemealing this. First it was, oh, we don't want the park. Oh, then we only want two fields. Oh, we don't want lights because lights are going to shine through our bedroom windows at 11 o'clock at night. The lights are not on that late. The sound system is not going to be that loud. The sound system is not going to be on at night. The sound system is not going to be on 365 days of the year. We need to do what's right for the entire community, not just think about people and their own personal opinions. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And rap music? Oh, rap music? We want to single out rap music? Sorry. Uh, we can go to that. We can go to that. It's okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yes. Deacon? Good evening. Dennis Harris, 1110 Eastern Avenue. Uh, I've been a member of this community for over 40 years. I've been involved in Franklin Township Pop Warner for over 35 years. I retired 2007. I've made visits to hundreds of other stadiums, fields. I've heard sound systems. I've heard the kids. And when you don't hear a sound system, it's a disgrace. You got little kids out there playing a game, and you don't know who they are. They got numbers on, but it doesn't tell you who's who. And parents want to be proud of their kids, and we have to stand up for them. But what I really want to tell you about is I've had giant season tickets for 40 years. Okay? No big deal. They take more money from me than anybody else, but... <laughs> Inside the stadium, you had a very good point, sir. The more speakers you have, the less the noise level is coming out of the speakers. Okay? The less speakers you have, the more noise you're going to hear outside. Rutgers Stadium has more speakers. You can ride on River Road. You don't hear the announcer from River Road at Rutgers Stadium. You hear the people cheering and you hear the cannon go off, but you don't hear the announcer. Giant Stadium, if you're outside the stadium, you don't hear the announcer. Okay? This sound system will benefit the parents and the kids of Franklin Township, everybody. Okay? I'm disappointed to hear people come up here criticize a festival or 
praise a festival and want to criticize putting in a sound system. Let's be logical. Okay? We're going to be around for a very short time. That's a nice feel. We should build it for the future. The sound systems today, back to my point about being involved in Pop Warner for 35 years, visiting a lot of stadiums. So technology is different today. Okay? So when the man pointed out that the, the speakers are pointed down, probably are. The technology of those speakers today is a lot different than it was 25, 30 years ago. You could hear it outside the place, outside the stadium. But I don't think you can hear it with the technology that they're using now. And that's the basic principle of this new system. More speakers will benefit. I don't know if this guy's got the deal done. Maybe you're still looking at other people. I suggest you do that. Okay. More speakers, less noise. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, Stanley Crowder, uh, Ralph Street. Um, two former presidents kind of said a good bit of what I wanted to say. So I'm just going to stand up here and just say a couple of things. One, um, the fact that we have a requirement that no sound can be heard. Sorry, no sound can be heard. I think that's unreasonable. Uh, I think that's extremely unreasonable, for number one. Um, you know, to Keith Stewart's point, we, we live with people. <laughs> we live amongst each other. We're going to hear sounds. We're going to hear all kinds of noises. Uh, so that's one point I want to take in. As far as the cost, um, there was a comment made about the organization is bringing in money. Uh, Pop Warner being probably, well, uh, it's one of the biggest organizations in, in Somerset. We have over 400 kids, and we're continually growing. Um, we take in as much money as, as we put into the program. We, we, we don't make any extra money. Um, uh, and we provide a lot to our children um, for free. Uh, a lot of different services, tutoring in, included. Uh, but one of the things that, that I definitely want to pick on or kind of single out here uh, is related to the fact that, you know, and again, a couple of the presidents kind of spoke to it. We are community, and this is something for everybody. Um, you know, there's a comment about these are specific children. I'm not particularly sure what that really meant. Um, but no, this is for all children. Um, soccer has probably over 50 something teams, uh, extremely diversified. Pop Warner, we have close to 400 people in the program uh, and diversifying every year, getting all kinds of people. And, and again, with a township with no community center, no type of outlet, no type of venue, um, really for the teens or the youths in this community, all they have are the sports organizations. That's all they have. Okay, um, I can't speak for any other organization in Pop Warner. Um, I'm the current president. I've been coaching about 12 years. I've seen this program grow. We got two teams at every level, okay, um, more so than any other Pop Warner in Central Jersey. We are the biggest in Central Jersey, and that goes to the Millstones, the North Brunswick's, and speaking of which, Sabella doesn't have a system. They use two speakers, pretty big speakers that they put right on the field. Elevated field, elevated ramp, and they have a DJ who speaks and plays music. Last year we had something similar. Those speakers got stolen, and I would probably say that anyone hear any complaints? I know the rec council didn't get any complaints with sounds. Not to mention that we're talking about eight, from a football perspective, eight to ten Sundays out of 365 days to benefit the children in this program, and to the Dennis's point, to go anywhere in 2014 where sports is played, particularly football, and not have a sufficient system to recognize kids as they run up and down the field from ages 5 to 13, 14, is just ridiculous. Particularly coming from a, 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 you know, a, a, a township as, as old as this one, as respected as this one, uh, and, and, and in my opinion, as, as uh, forward-thinking as this one. But, you know, I, I think we get caught up in, 
in so many different things. And, you know, Keith made a statement, and it sound, you know, it probably sound a little raw, but I mean, to, to be able to come up here and, and speak with any sense of intelligence in front of anyone and say, I want to hear, I don't want to hear anything, or I just want to hear creeks, I want to hear animals, or, or, or something, that, that doesn't make any sense to me, personally. Um, again, the children are our future. And we don't have anything. We're not providing anything in Franklin for them, okay? All we have are, are these sports, okay? So if, if we don't do the right things in that area, then what you will have is probably something that you don't want, okay? And uh, I, I hate to go back, what, nine years maybe? Not that far. We had a serious problem in Township, Okay, and I would have to say, and I and I can say very strongly that Pop Warner had a lot of influence in that. Okay, with the coaches that some of the coaches that are here, we we, we are more than coaches. We are father figures, we are mentors, we are role models. I can speak to a kid that I've coached in twenty thousand in two thousand six, the same way I did in two thousand six, and get the same level of respect and the same level of results that I, you know, have the same expectation of him and vice versa that, that I had in 2006. That's the type of relationship that is built in youth sports. So, again, I, I want to employ that the council. I think the one point is, you know, do we need to look at another company? Maybe. You know, let's do the due diligence. But at the end of the day, the system is needed, okay? It benefits the community. Not just one group, not just one area of town. And nobody, to Keith's point, I'm wrapping it up, man. To Keith's point, nobody's complaining about middle school noise. I hear it every Sunday, or every Saturday when they had those games. I enjoyed it. Okay, nobody complains about those areas. Thank Adam, you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, come on, please. Hello, my name is Dorothy Cruz. I live at 33 Holly Street. And... Um, I listened to the Franklin Middle School or Franklin High School when it was the high school uh, every weekend and during the week when they're practicing and it does not disturb me. I moved to Franklin in 1992. I'm a home owner. I'm a parent. I'm also an adoptive parent. I just got involved with Pop Warner three years ago and I think it's a great organization but the field is not just for them. It's not just for my children. It's for anybody who wants to be out there and enjoy a sport. And I would remind you there's a sign as you drive into Franklin that says, in 2008, it was the best place to raise a family. I want it to be that again. OK, thank you. Other people? Yeah, come on. And then, yeah, you go out next. OK. Oh, you, you could, after her you go, okay. Thanks. Hello, my name is Elaine Guerrero. You can pull it down. Oh, physically pull it. My name is Elaine Guerrero. I live at 3 Franklin Boulevard, Summer, Somerset, Franklin Township. And I am here to complain about the festival that's coming up June 6th to the 8th. I've been in that area since 2006. And every year it has gotten larger and larger and noisier and noisier. And it has been a problem. The people that are involved in at the festival, when you say something concerning parking, they get very upset with you. They get very angry. They get very hostile. And it's almost to the point where you're like, you have to call the police. Because if my daughter and my son-in-law were to come and visit, where would they park? They would get a ticket for parking those days. And it, it's just not fair to the people that lived in this area. It's really unfair. OK, thank you. Yes. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, my name is Jasmine Castro. I've been living in uh, on Gorgan Way. Uh, actually, I was the first house that was built on that site, so I mm -hmm. am uh, very much involved in, or affected rather, by the Middlebush uh, Park. 
I have two children. They go to Franklin, um, and I have a daughter that goes to Rutgers. We've been very much involved. My husband and I have been very much involved in the soccer, baseball, and every way in which we can help the children because in our mind, obviously, our children are our future, ours, yours, and everybody else's. I'm all for anything that will entertain a child and keep them away from problems. I'm, I love the way the park uh, was built. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I am totally against uh, the actual speakers because in my mind, there is no way that we could have peace of mind in that area in the Charles Gauguin way. As it is right now, there are no speakers. As it is now, if you are driving up Charles into Gauguin, you hear it. Um, you hear the noise. You hear the wonderful, the wonderful uh, you know, kids playing back and forth. Um, it's a great thing if you're hearing it once in a blue, but we hear it every Saturday and every Sunday. I sympathize with the people that are having the problem with the festivals, but the festivals are there once a month, once a year. We hear it every Saturday and every Sunday. Um, so I, I'm just... I'm just baffled also by the gentleman that came in to make his presentation. I don't know anything about megawatts or anything with noise. All I know is if you either hear a noise or you do, or you do not. If he has 20 years experience in this, if he has built this many amount of systems, I find it hard to believe that he can't tell you how, how, how far does my house have to be in order for me to hear the speakers or not, which was a question that the gentleman posed and the other gentleman post. I find it hard to believe that if you build a speaker system in uh, East High School or East Brunswick High School, that you cannot tell us how far do our houses need to be to avoid hearing the noise. I just do not think mm. that uh, that's exactly what, uh, what we wanted to hear, and I think we need to address that. Um, in reference to hearing music, I don't care what kind of music is being played, I want to hear Saturdays and Sundays, I put in 50, 60 hours of work a week, and so does my husband. Um, obviously, to, we, we, we purposely moved to this area because of the quietness, because of the peacefulness, because of what we were looking for for our children. I don't want that interrupted, and I think a lot of the uh, homeowners of Charles and Gauguin feel the same way. At this time, um, I understand, uh, we don't want to sound selfish. It's not about just the people in Charles and Gauguin, because I realize the park is beautiful and it helps everyone, and it's going to generate money, et cetera. But if it comes to a point where it's affecting us, I really don't want to hear speakers or music or any kind of music, for that matter, on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, it's just not something that I think would be feasible, that would be able to help us. I pay a tremendous amount of taxes, tremendous amount of money to keep my house going, and I'm sure most of the homeowners are also doing that. Um, it's just not something that I think I would want. I, I know that I do not want in, in, on that block. The amount of noise that comes off now, just take a walk. You said that the two of the gentlemen I heard, well, you know, we really needed to go to the high school to see how big the noise is. Forget the speakers. Just take a walk by Gauguin or Charles on a Saturday and Sunday. You're living in the middle of a park. We don't live in our homes now. Our backyard became a park. Okay? Um, I realize that people uh, may say, well, you know, it, 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 you know it's, not, it's, it's selfish. I don't think it's selfish. I have no problem with the park. Again, it's beautiful. But I think speakers would be going way overboard. I don't think we need the speakers. I believe that we can function without the speakers. We're not saying kill the park. We're not saying get rid of the park. We're saying keep the park. But we don't need the speakers. I think it's definitely going to affect us because th literally the park was built in our yard. And that's basically all I have to say. So I really would like you guys to consider, reconsider that um, as a hazard actually to us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. And then, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You can, you can stand behind her and then just go next. That's fine. Good evening. Go My name is Letitia Mingledorf. I'm at 5 Boulder Lane in Somerset. I'm out tonight to say that the park is wonderful. I personally have four children. And when I'm out there at that field with those four children, I personally want to know that my child has made a touchdown, that my child is running towards the touchdown, okay? So I think that we do need a sound system. 
everything in Franklin Township as far as what the youth need, as long as I've been here, which is as long as I've been alive, has been shut down. They wanted a why here for these children to stay off the street. That was shut down because they didn't want to hear the noise. Everything cannot, that cannot be the answer to everything that our children who are raised in this community, who will carry this community when all of you are gone, that cannot be the answer that they don't want to hear specific music, that they don't want to hear goal or touchdown. Everybody uses that field. Everybody benefits from a sound system. Not just specific children, every child. As I said, as a mother of four children, I want to know when my children are out there. I think that this committee needs to consider what is best for the children in this community. As someone stated earlier, if you don't do something, you're going to have a bigger problem. My motto to all four of my children when I speak with someone is, I don't want to lose one to the street. Not one. And I have four boys. So if you don't do something for them in this community, they're going to tear the community up. So I suggest, strongly urge, encourage that you do something. I'm not saying that the sound system that was presented here tonight may be the answer, but they do need a sound system. It does make them feel proud when they're out there and they hear their name. And then their parents are jumping and hollering that they did make that touchdown. That's my baby. That's my number 22 or whatever number it is. Each child feels and is built, building of their self-esteem when they hear that. We need to think about that. It is for the children, for their future. Okay, thank you. My name is Joanne Jackson, and I live at 136 Charles Street. I, when, I, when my husband and I moved into uh, this area, we moved because we liked the area. It was something nice. Then the park was built. So OK, all right. We have plenty of neighbors moving out because of the park. We're happy with the park. But every Saturday, I don't want to hear a sound system. I don't. And I don't, I hadn't planned to come up, but I wanted you to hear, because it's in my backyard. And it's, a pro, it's going to be a problem for me if I have to hear it every Saturday and during the week. My opinion. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, then. I am uh, Han Bevanikati. I live in uh, 14 Gogwin Way. I am a PhD scientist. I work in the area of green chemistry. And I bought a house on Gogwin Way because I wanted to live in a green and peaceful surrounding. That was the only reason we bought a house there. All the green is gone. All the trees have gone whatever my green chemistry that has gone and on top of that the peace also has gone. I mean I love to be having a peaceful surrounding as I said and that's why some of my other colleagues or neighbors also bought houses there. I invite all of you to come and live there uh, and experience yourself how it is on some of the days when there is game going on. We all love children, okay? We also have children. Not that we don't have children. We also have children. We have children as well as we have elderly people living in the house. All of them need some peaceful moments. Park, yes, we all love to hear children. But doesn't mean that there has to be a speaker or sound system. As it is, it is becoming difficult to live there. On top of that, if we install sound system it's going to be even difficult for us to live there 
so please have some respect for the residents living there in charles street and gogun way itself there are about 50 residents we talk of money now those 50 houses have been paying close to about 700000 dollars per year in property taxes and the only reason they moved there is because of that peace and that is being taken away so please have some respect for us also for all the residents who are living there thank you okay thank you yes sir my name is giron madrano i also live in i also live in the uh, gokan way uh, i have a lot of neighbors here uh, i have two kids that i love to go to the uh, to the uh, playground they they enjoy a lot sometimes we go on weekends to watch some games they like to see the uh, the football games and i can tell you there was is a lot of noise yeah but uh, if you rely on a on on the uh, as noise uh, on noise system as a, a sound system to be your kids to be proud i think it's not the correct way to to feel to make them feel that way i can hear a lot of uh, a lot of parents shouting and they can those shouts you can hear them in all the field you don't need a, a sound system to 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 cheer up your 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 kids just say hey you that's my kid this is my the number that's enough you don't need a, a sound system so we don't we don't want to we don't want to hear any if the, if a kid made a, a touchdown either he is a kid has that number or if, or there was a a a change of players i think we have enough to, enough uh, uh, noise with the uh, <coughs> with all with all the uh, shouting shoutings of the uh, of the fathers we love the 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 kids playing uh, a sport now we have more we have a uh, softball baseball we have uh, soccer uh, and football we love that we have the playground we take advantage of that but uh, you know the noise is at this time has been uh we we can hold it but now we have the noise of the lights it's a, like a white noise they are turned on at at night while there's no activity at 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 the park and uh now with this if we add this noise i think it's uh is is over 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 overwhelming so just uh my my request is just that don't don't have the uh system noise uh, system sound implemented because it's going to disturb a lot all the uh, neighborhoods and not only charles in gogan way is is i say as a hunters crossing i was really impressed about that and if that's the case it means that charles in gogan way is very very high so that's my only request okay thank you <laughs> yes sir yeah and then you can go after him Stafford Ferguson 196 Mantle Place. I wasn't going to come up but uh when they spoke about your child needs a better way to be proud. I don't know if they have uh, any uh graduations that they don't say your child's name when you come up. They just let the kids walk up and just get their diploma walk down. There's a reason they say the kid's name because they want you to be proud. If you didn't get acknowledgement when you did something great, it wouldn't be that good. So that's why they say your kid's name. Not just because it's the only way you can uh get some privilege out of your child but everybody likes to be acknowledged when they do something when i when we first moved to the town we used to uh look for a place to that that, that would have a good park for our kids when we first had our, our first kid we used to go to middlebrook park before there was any football field and we just grass and i used to say it would be a nice place for a football field i got my dream i got three boys and they i'm hoping they all play pop warner football they don't dance or something like that hope they all play football <laughs> and so when i hear the kid you know i'm you know i i talk about my kids every day i work and the sports they play and what they did the weekend and if they did something on a field if they played another sport if they rode their bike or something like that i want to talk about them because i like to hear something that they did the people that i talk to they like to hear about what kids have done and their accomplishments they do every day we want to hear about what somebody's done or what our kids have done for an accomplishment so hearing the hearing your kids name over over what they've done just on a random basis is great everybody wants to hear kids cheering and they all talk about how great it is they hear the kids playing at the park and then in the second sentence they say 
Well, the kids playing at the park is just a little too noisy. I can hear the kids in my backyard. It's nice, but not that nice. Well, if you, if you, I, I don't want to be mean and anything like that. And I know that the guy that was here before, he wasn't the greatest uh, presenter on his device and uh, and his sound system. And again, other people said maybe we should look at a different company. But I'm pretty sure that if we. If you can, you can't come to a, a, a balance where everybody can be happy, where the sound system is not going to be crazy and it's not going to be a DJ with a speaker that's just blasting it out. There's going to be uh, uh, some kind of uh, just a balance for some common sense that we're not going to disturb the whole world on just trying to have a football game for for a couple of little kids. It's not an NFL game where the whole stadium is going to be filled. It's it's we've all been to the field. It's not it's not tremendously big. Uh, and it's not tremendously overbearing. It's just a small field, and the, and the sound system, I think, will definitely benefit every, every person that goes out there. Again, it, this is my personal dream come true, because when I used to go out there with just when I had just one kid, and we said this would be a great place for a football field instead, and now we have it. So I would just, it would be almost like Christmas time if we had a football with a, with a sound system for my kid to go up and down the field, my second kid to go up and down the field, my third kid to go up and down the field, for me to hear all their names in one single day. I don't even know how great that would be, but just consider that. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Brian Bidlack, 115 Charles Street. Um, my property is located at approximately... 150 feet from the uh, two current fields. So I certainly have a first-hand experience of the noise and, and the, all the impacts from, uh, from the activities there. Um, I had sent uh, Councilwoman Sherman uh, an email today because I had just learned of this discussion um, yesterday. And I was not aware of where the status of what it, what it was and such. So I just wanted to forward my comments to her and hopefully uh, the rest of the council will get those comments. I will follow up with the councilman and chairman on that just to make sure that you do. But I just want to highlight a couple of things from that and then maybe just make a few comments. Um, it, the uh, last year during the fall season, I know there was a, uh, the pop Warner, I, be I believe had activities out at the fields last fall. And there was some use of a temporary sound system at that time, at least on a few occasions. And I can tell you, at that time, the noise was so unbearable in my property. I could, I, I had to take my, me and the kids had to go in the basement, just, just so, just to, to, to not hear the noise. It was that loud. There was, there was uh, music, um, there was announcements. I, I don't know that it was every week, but I do know on a couple of occasions there was a temporary sound system, and it was quite unbearable. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And uh, I, I am appreciative of the, uh, some of the discussion that has happened tonight. Um, some of the questions that were asked earlier, obviously um, there's still some more due diligence to do on this proposed system. Um, I, too, I too have two children in the school district, 11 and 10. They both participate in the, uh, in the uh, um, sports programs. I'm happy they're in it. I'm happy there's a facility that can be used for the kids. Um, I just think that it's, we have to uh, uh, develop this site accordingly and uh, please be respectful of us in, in any manner that you can. Uh, some of the history of this, I've been there since uh, 2002. So I'm one of the first homeowners on Charles Street. There was no, the park was not developed at that time. At that time in 2002, I um, did some research here at the town and, and, and inquired and got some conceptual plans for the development of the park. And I was, I was under the impression that there would be considerable buffers at that time, two to 300 feet for all the residents of any potential um, fields. Um, we don't have that today. So I'm not trying to bring up sour grapes, but th that, that was one thing that happened in the past that we were counting on. It didn't happen. Uh, and following along through the years, um, there was a lighting system put on. We came here a year and a half ago, and we were told there would be no impact on our properties. I can tell you um, at nighttime, the lights are, they are, they are must be on a timer because I think they go off about 930 at night. I can tell you on the second floor of my house, it's a complete beam of light shining into my house. I have to close the shades at night so my kids can go to bed. It would just be, it's like someone's got a spotlight outside shining, shining into our second floor. The first floor, for whatever reason, it's not a problem. My backyard's not a problem. You get up in height, and there's definitely a problem with the lights. Um, so I just, you know, at this time, I just want to 
say I, I do understand that there is a, a lot of community support for this project and the development of this park, much more so than the descent of any neighbors here on Charles Street or Goggin Way. I would just ask that you be respectful in your decisions and please just uh, try to balance it and, and consider um, the residents in our neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone who hasn't spoken would like to? Yes, sir. And then, yeah, then you can come next. Or, yeah, go ahead as long as you're on your way. Then, then you can go after. Go ahead. Uh, Bill Gallagher, 36 Lake Avenue. I am the uh, co president of the Franklin Township Soccer Club. And I'm also a member of your um, Recreation Advisory Council. Um, so, obviously, I'm here to speak on behalf of the sound system. Um, we as a Recreation Advisory Council discuss this and, and agree that it should be installed. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of discussion tonight. So I want to address just a couple of the points. Um, first, thank you for all of your efforts in making this uh, park finally happen. Um, as we have been speaking tonight, we were actually able to hold uh, three makeup uh, travel division soccer games uh, that occurred tonight while we were speaking. And that's, uh, that's, that's pretty great to be able to do that finally after uh, many years. So uh, we, we thank you for that. Um, as far as the park goes, um, right now it is still a uh, construction project. It is not complete. So as far as uh, like the berms and the landscaping, all of that stuff isn't done, I believe. Mr. Vornlocker can attest to that. Um, so like the last gentleman just said, you know, the, the, the lights should be blocked by the time the berms are finally completed and the landscaping and the trees are put on top of there. Uh, and also I believe the lights can be adjusted so hopefully we can have the contractor come back out and adjust the lights that are shining into the neighbors houses as opposed to where they should be on the field. So hopefully that can be addressed. Um, as far as the sound system the same thing uh, goes. Um, I believe that uh, you need to do more due diligence, obviously. Uh, maybe look at other contractors. Obviously, he couldn't answer the most basic question that we all have. You know, how is it going to affect our neighbors there? Uh, it's not our intention as the sports organizations to be bothering the neighbors. Um, so we would appreciate if, we, if you as the council do more research on that and find a, a way to make that work for us. Uh, as far as that goes, I believe that once you do pick a company, the technology exists now where the volume would be at a level that it is heard in the park. As the, as the gentleman was explaining, um, I've been to uh, many other parks, as Dennis had mentioned when he talks, and, and you, you barely hear the announcing going on in the parking lot in some of the newer places. Some of the old places, like we we have the announcements currently at Franklin Middle School, I, you know, I'm pretty far from there and I can hear it. Uh, it doesn't bother me personally, but I can understand that people living closer would. But so, as far as we know, we haven't heard many complaints about the from those neighbors right there at the middle school. Um, so I believe that you know you guys can find a, a contractor that can put in a system that isn't going to be at a noise level that's louder than your ordinance allows. It, you know, as a township, you wouldn't own a system that's going to break your own ordinance. I would hope, and um, that should help alleviate the uh, concerns of some of the neighbors. Um, so that was the main point. Park isn't done yet. Once, once all the rest of the berms are done, that should definitely help with uh, the neighbors and, the, and how it affects them. Uh, I think that was, that was it for now. Thank you. Mr. Hey, Gallagher. Thank you. Mr. Gallagher. Hi. So you introduced yourself as a member of Rec Council and yes. The um, president of the soccer. Co-president, yes. Uh, met you before. Uh, and you're doing a wonderful job. My question is, though, do you intend for soccer to use the sound system? Uh, we have never done that before, but once it's set up, we, we may announce games. It, it would be difficult for us to do it on a regular game day, but uh, we do have our travel division has playoff games where we would might maybe have one game going on at, at a time. and. In the future, we could see that being a, an option to announce a game. Um, but as, as of now, we, you know, we've never had that option, so it's something new to us to consider. Okay. But I, I can't imagine when we have two and, and sometimes three games going on at once that, that it would work for us. I, 
I don't know if they can, uh, the technology exists to make the sound only work on one field and not the other. I don't think they can do that, that specific. So for us, actually, that is the intention for pop. Oh, you think if that's possible. Then Councilman, I, I think what he's talking about is on one field, there are three games at oh, once because no. they play sideways. So no, right. there, the technology hasn't reached that point yet. No. But, but for pop Warner, they're having one main game field and the other game is warming up. You know, and, and they would announce the one game. They wouldn't be announcing both sides at the same time in general. Okay. Yeah, to your Bluetooth. <laughs> that was it. Okay, thank you. You got it. The other people who haven't spoken, if you'd like to speak, well, you can line up and um, you're not precluded, but that way we kind of cycle you through quickly. Uh, and um, a, quick, a quick foreshadow for anyone. After this, we're going to go to some committee reports, then council comments. At that point, any of the council members no. may or may not we're you know, we're comment. Going. We're not interrupting you with our comments, but at the end, council may, may respond to that. We're going to executive session. Oh, that's coming next. Okay. Yes. We got to okay. get to executive session. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Mayor and uh, your name and address. Uh, yes. Sorry. Well, uh, I moved to Franklin Township about one year ago. I live oh. in 119 Charles Street. Could you give us your name and address? Okay, uh, Ron Marty, 119 Charles Street, okay. Somerset. Yeah, uh, uh, I moved to this township about one year ago, and then what I noticed from that time is, uh, I mean, uh, the previously I was living in Manalapan Township. I was not aware of any, you know, uh, uh, playgrounds or something near my house, so I never ha heard of any sounds, anything. And also, when I did a Google Maps, I was not aware that I was such so close to a, uh, a, a community playground where, you know, on the weekends, even with some closed doors, I can also hear the noise inside on the weekends without any. Um, without any microphones as of today. So I'm aware that uh, we cannot have it everything our way. It's a give and take. A community is a give and take. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, uh, you were a compromise. I'm willing to, you know, have some compromise. But if they say that the sound system will only be used 8 or, uh, or 14 or 15 days in a year, uh, you know, maybe we can say that, okay, you know, that's fine. But if it's used for 30, 40, 50 days in a year, that's almost every weekend, which, which will become, you know, except the winter time, which will become a big compromise for us. And also many people, when we go for walks in the evenings, in the summertime and springtime, and all my neighbors say that there are like at least, you know, five, six homes for sale in the development at all the times. So they all ask me, is this because the noise people are selling and moving out? I mean, I, mean, I just made a big investment. I don't want to lose uh, the money. I want to enjoy, uh, I'm planning to live for a long time. At the same time, if I'm hearing something uh, which, is, uh, which is negative to my, you know, to my house and development, it's a problem. So I just want to be you know, uh, aware that you, know, that you all should be cognizant of the respect that, you know, that we would not like to be disturbed. You know, um, uh, uh, I'm a father of two children, and then definitely I'm also uh, what called <coughs> uh, 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 appreciate to, to, to the fact that uh, you know we need to have playgrounds and everything, but then we need to keep it you know have, have a good balance to the closest neighbors who live there. I, I'm also like uh, 150 feet away from the uh, goalpost, for, so I just want to you know, share that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, and just a quick correction: I was told I had the order a little wrong. Yeah, we can keep going, but after this, we're going to go into our executive session. We're not going to make our comments. But Good evening. My name is Idris Wyatt. I'm a resident since 1991 and I live at 59 Appleman Road. Um, I figured since I came out in support of the parks that I should at least say something before I go home. <laughs> um, I will say that I am still a little um, bothered by some of the, the comments that I've heard tonight whether they're um, against the, the park. Um, terms like yapping on the speakers, dragging my kids out here. Um, I've heard the term safety and security. I don't understand why that would be an issue. Um, and then even the specific reference to rap music. So I am taking that personal tonight. But um, I did just want to say, you know, we're here having these conversations. I, as a homeowner, I do understand that there, there are different opinions that are out here. But I think the conversation does need to stay centered around, you know, as, as your job, what type of system is going to go into place um, what system is going to be able to support the number of children and, and youth activities that will take place in this park. Um, I think, you know, we need to be mindful that, yes, the middle school and those residents have the same issues, but we're still there. Um, the high school, you can hear them also, but they're still there. And even the baseball fields, 
you hear them every week much more than you will even with Pop Warner and soccer put together. Um, so I think that I understand what the residents are saying who live there, but we are a community. We have um, a lot of children who will be able to use that area, and it, it would only make our community better. Uh, we do have ordinances in place. Uh, we have to respect those, so I'm not standing here saying that's something that we're trying to amend. We want to abide by what the ordinances are in Franklin Township, but I think that we do need to um, be careful of the things that are just being thrown out there as making a case that aren't necessarily true, including this assumption that we're out there all night. Pop Warner is not out there all night. We have Sunday games, and the few evening games we have, they're regulated by the state. We're not having children out there at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night setting up for a game. That's just not what we do. And for people to make that assumption that every time they hear something that it may be related to Pop Warner, that's not true. So we need to just stick to the facts about what's really going on. And any of the council is welcome to come out to our games and to see what's going on and see how often we are out there. There are 52, how many weekends in a year? Maybe 52? I should know that. Um, but our season runs in terms of games, I think, like Coach Stan said, maybe eight or nine games out of the year. So in terms of it being all year long, that's not a true statement also. Um, so I just ask that you, know, that you do also recognize that Pop Warner has representation throughout Franklin Township. We're not all in one particular ward. We are coming from all over Franklin and these are your representatives in the community. So thank you and good night. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Um, uh, my name is John Blum. Um, uh, my wife and I live at 82 McGuffey Road. Uh, we're about oh, probably a third of a mile from the, uh, uh, from the park. Um, the, uh, I my, my background is as a mechanical engineer. Um, I've also worked at uh, both Crossroads and George Street Theater at, at various times in the late 80s, early 90s. So I'm, I'm familiar with sound systems. And I think that the, uh, the overall layout of this is kind of inappropriate. I mean, for a, uh, for a set of bleachers, which is probably oh, maybe 75, 80 feet long, something like that, uh, you're talking these large pole mounted speakers. Um, the, uh, the, the speakers on the poles uh, on the side, sides facing Charles, I have no doubt your sound will be carrying e easily into that. Um, and, I th and I think the, well, I understand the need and the desire for sound because it's, hey, it's great. It, it gets everybody amped up um, and it makes a lot of fun. I, I think the overall scale is is wrong and it should be we should be looking at smaller speakers either mounted onto the uh the press boxes or uh or or something something closer on a uh you know portable system like the gentleman had said where you can bring it out uh place it in front of the, place it in front of the bleachers um on a, on a per game basis and something portable but i think um when you're talking you know multiple uh, 1,200 watt amplifiers. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of sound power. I, I mean, from where I am, I can hear the cheering. That doesn't bother me. I can hear the stage house, the music they play in the summer. Yeah, it's it, it's faint. I can hear what they're singing. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, I, I think when you start talking, mounting a speaker. Uh, I, the gentleman didn't say how high up the pole they, they were going to be, 30, 30 to 40 feet. Um, so you're talking about something which is going to be shooting over the tops of trees, over the tops of houses. I think that's, I think that's a large impact. And I think, I think the project needs to be scaled down and to try and get the speakers closer to the people um, and, not, and not shooting around the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone who has not spoken, wish to speak. Oh yes, sir. Anyone else who wants, you can, you know, come up by the microphone. Certainly. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Vlad Duretsky. I live in uh, Charles Street, 130 Charles Street. So um, I heard both sides, pro and cons, and uh, the most of the cases, it's. Um, 
people mention about the technology, the modern te technology, car current technology. Uh, so in the modern time, maybe if um, society spend a little bit more money for this, not 25, maybe more. I'm not sure how much. And I'm sure is this real or not? We need to Google, we need to, to make some additional research. Point is, um, there is a system that uh, I heard, I read, I just Google sitting there. The speaker that try to uh, cancel noise that coming from opposite side. So as we know, the <coughs> small samples that we have, the speaker phones, that try to cancel all noise around. You're just sitting and working like you sitting in the like total well of cancellation. So these type of speakers allow you to uh, provide enough noise for um, enough sound. Let's say enough sound for the stadium, but the same speaker from opposite side catches the sound that come in opposite way and cancel it. It makes the um, opposite wave that kind of neglect sound that coming toward the uh, living area. So if I know it's kind of it's it's not sci-fi. It's already exist. I'm not sure how much it costs. But we may need to consider that. Again, thank you for. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who has not spoken wish to address the council? Mr. Mayor, upon seeing no one coming forward, I make a motion to close the public session. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion is carried. Okay, so we're, this is executive session. I had a little wrong before. Okay, so here's, here's what's going to happen. We're going to go into executive session. Exec usually they're at the end of the meeting, but there's a couple of things upon which we have to vote, so it's now. Executive session is when the council meets in private. There's only a couple times you can do that, let's say, for personnel or, or attorney-client privilege, things such as that. So um, we're going to go in. It could take... A few moments could take an hour. I'm not sure. Hopefully, not too long. And um, when we come out, actually, we're going Mr. To Mayor, yes, Councilman Kramer. I mean, we can change the motion, but the motion was to move yeah. the executive session to item 13.5. Oh, see, I did have it right. Okay. So we were going to do council comments first. I think okay. that people deserve to hear okay. our comments on what they said. Okay. So how do you? Um, okay. So actually, right now, thank you for that. Okay, so right now the agenda is to do committee report, council comments, executive session. So if, um, if there's no motion to change that, that's what we're going to do. If you want to change that around, then we'll change it around. Otherwise, Mayor, Councilman Vassanella. I make a motion that we forgo to committee reports for this evening. And we go immediately into executive session if the attorney believes that this will be a relatively short executive session. I see most of the people that were here to spoke already left, but. Okay, you wanna. And then come back and give council comments. Unless there's not the urgency, and I, I would appreciate if the manager and attorney chime in, unless there is not an urgency to get into executive session to get these uh, contract situation. Okay, okay. so. Much as I am glad we were able to get this conversation going here uh, and okay. dealing with this uh, sensitive matter, could the attorney or manager please let us know? And okay. but either way, I wouldn't forgo committee reports for this evening. Okay, so I'm going to um, just reiterate. I'm going to interject real quickly to reiterate. We're not uh, voting or making a decision on this right. night. Well, we're just hearing what you're saying. However, it's conceivable we may comment, give you our thoughts on it. Okay, so the motion is to. For a go committee reports, go to executive session now, then come back to council comments. Okay. So let's. What's the council or, consensus on or, where we go? Or council comments first. I, I'm yeah, just want to forgo the committee report and make sure we get to executive. the urgency of our executive session in the time that lawyer and. Okay. All right. So you're basically doing the same thing except eliminating committee reports. Yes. Okay. Yes, there, Mayor. Okay, just put there, there's at least one thing which I think needs discussion from a committee report. That was uh, when we were talking about CDBG, I think administration and finance took that. I think we should discuss that. But again, we can do that after the executive session. That's not 
something we've got to do now. Could you explain that order to me one more time? I, I, We're not talk actually, about Mr. Mayor, I, I don't talk believe about that. that that necessarily needs to be discussed tonight. That's something that I'm dealing with at the manager's level right now to deal with the, the one in one grant application in particular. And I haven't had an opportunity to speak with the people who have made that grant application yet. So there, there's not any urgency at this particular point as far as that's concerned. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll second eliminating committee reports if we can just move this on so that the public gets to hear our responses okay so basically okay the motion is keep going as we're doing but skip over committee reports and do that next meeting yes okay uh, that's okay all in favor aye. aye opposed abstain motion is carried okay so we'll um start down there mm. yeah okay so I guess we'll start over here Carl you're on Carl huh? council, right. council comments okay. okay so what we're gonna do now again we're not voting on this council comments we may or may not speak on this or any other issue and then uh, we'll go into the executive session after that we'll continue on with the other ordinances etc okay so first councilman Wright council comments <laughs> took me off guard there I didn't know where where we were um, I only have one <laughs> I only have one that way we can move this thing forward uh, wait to our township manager I'm catching him off guard too um, just so that we we just so that we understand where we're where we've been and where we're going um, if we could just briefly touch on how we came to acquire that piece of property and sure. just you know let everybody know how that came to be and sure where we were going and after that uh, I'm gonna enter uh, echo the sentiments of a lot of speakers even Charles Street uh, go again way I'm, I'm gonna go along with some of that uh, but township manager please go ahead and uh, explain that for us okay um, it, in the 1990s, uh, a developer, uh, Pizzo and Pizzo, and based out of Bridgewater, acquired a, a number of parcels in the Middle Bush area, including what someone earlier identified as the Somerset Stables property, which is comprises most of what is now Middle Bush Park. Um, when Pizzo and Pizzo acquired the property, uh, the subdivision that was subsequently approved by the planning board was a cluster zone uh, subdivision. Uh, it, it was actually kind of unique because it was a non-contiguous cluster zone. It included three parcels, uh, one at Treptow and, and Cedar Grove, one on Delwood, and this parcel off of Charles Street. Um, as part of cluster zoning, uh, a portion of the property is then dedicated to the township uh, and in this particular case, it was dedicated to the township as parkland. Um, it, it was always intended, once it acquired by the town, to be a park. That was its purpose. Uh, so it, the, the subdivision, Glen Eyre, which was the, the name of the, the, the development, um, that includes Charles Street and Gaugan Way, was part of that Pizzo and Pizzo development. So it, it would... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Go right so, ahead, Councilman Wright. I, I wanted to bring that up, and I wanted to make sure that I was clear on that, because some people thought that there was never supposed to be a park. Some people thought that it was just a field that no one knew about. It was just a field. It was just laying out there. But it was always slated to be a park. That's why the property was given to Franklin Township. Open space, but it was always there. It was never developed, but it was always there. So for 10 years, that land sat vacant. Uh, I think Councilman Kramer, when I brought it up before about the skate park to nowhere, and I don't know who was on the council at that time that we had that big thing about the skate park. Yeah, okay, you two down there. Uh, it was a big deal to spend, uh, what, $250,000 or something like that for the skate park. And that was just dropped in there. 
I don't understand the rhyme or reason, but it was dropped in. I, I can't speak about that because I wasn't around. Um, but that was always slated to be a park. We just got around to doing that. Uh, we took the money, open space trust fund, which you've already paid into, and we built the park. Some people might like the park. Some people might hate the park. Some people might be indifferent to the park. Um, but I think it's a worthwhile effort. Um, I push for it. Land use jumped on board with it. Uh, Councilman Sherman, she spoke up because she wanted to have some idea of what we were trying to do. So she definitely was in there, not for the park, not against the park, but trying to make the park better. And I wish she was here tonight, but she'll be here next, next time, meeting. Next meeting to actually state her preference uh, for or against and, and how it was supposed to come out from her point of view. But I'm on record, it's well known, um, no question about it, 100% for the speakers in Middle Bush Park. Could it be better? Can we do a better design? Sure, I'll go down the road with you on that. Not an issue, not a problem. I went by the park today, and yes, from they cleared the trees, so I saw the houses all lined up, real nice houses. But if anyone was here, our famous uh, it was an ecologist, Councilman Theodore Chase, in land use said what about the buffering you got to put it back so if anybody's going to guide me on buffering it's councilman theodore chase i'm going to rely on his judgment on buffering on how to do that and what's the best way to do that um other than that mr mayor uh, i'm done with my council comments and thank you very much thank you councilman kramer Councilman Phil Kramer. Get the whole thing, pardon me. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. So uh, I'm going to make some comments about some of the comments that were made. But first, I want to talk about how tonight came about. Um, Councilman Wright uh, obviously has a passion for Pop Warner, who was a member of Pop Warner, the voice of Pop Warner for many years, and he's a passion for the kids, and, and, and that's righteous. Um, uh, and he wants a sound system, and that's, that's fine, that's his right. Um, so he took it on himself, and I think he spoke with the manager somewhat, and found a company that does science sound systems to come talk to us to tell us about uh, that technology. Councilwoman Sherman and I uh, are are the ward people for third ward and second ward, respectively. And our wards immediately sound or surround the park, so we are of course concerned for our constituents. Those are the people who vote us in. So while we consider the whole town, we also consider uh, those wards specifically, just like a state senator is concerned about, I mean, a United States senator is concerned about the whole country, they obviously have to be concerned about their state. Um, so she and I took it upon ourselves with our own money um, and sent out those cheap postcards um, uh, to the people uh, in the area. I debated whether, because I'm cheap, uh, whether I should send uh, an spend another dollar or two and, and mail to, uh, uh, what is it, Hunter Hunter Hunter's Crossing, um, because I thought that was going to be too far and to, to mail down to the end of Wilson, because I thought that would be too far, and apparently uh, I was right to mail because they are, they are hearing the, the sound already uh, from there. So that's, that's how this came about. I, I have to actually defend the person who came he was just speaking about a generic system for a park this size he he wasn't he's not done any calculations i wouldn't you know i hope maybe he would know numbers about it but it's not a, it's not simply a speaker in the middle of the desert there's trees around there's buffering around there's stands there th sound reflects it's a calculation and as an engineer i know that he's not going to just come up with that 
as far as him having the contract or anything, there is no contract yet. This is right now an idea, and however it may go, if, 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 if there is a contract, he may get it, he may not, there may be a bid process, there may not, That's, that hasn't happened yet. This is just Councilman Wright trying to get as much information to Council so Council can make a decision, and Councilwoman Sherman and I letting our constituents know about it. That's, that's where we are. Now, as far as some of the comments made, I, I was a little upset by the comment that, you know, we haven't done anything for the youth. This, this setup of this council, these council members have been here for five or a little over four years. Some longer, some are, are the rest of us five years, but this setup of this council has been here five years and we have done an enormous amount for the children. In fact, we have spent $8.4 million on that park and we did it gladly and, and, count. and, and counting and we did it gladly and proudly and I remember that first Pop Warder game, I st stood up in the, um, the press box with, with uh, Councilman um, Wright and I, I welled up and I was, I was proud that if I left council then, I had done a great thing. This is about, however, limiting the impact on those who live around it, that, that this is an impact on them. Now, I don't know about the middle school area. I, I don't, that's not in my ward. But I do walk around Samson G. Smith School where they have soccer, and those people complain to me about the noise from the soccer. They're not against soccer. They're not against kids. But they wish that noise wasn't there. Now, there was a comment about people should go where people don't, where there aren't, people should go where people are not living if they, do, if they don't want to have noise around them. Well, the Middle Bush area has been there for, Mr. Vornlocker, give me a guess. Well, 1600s? Yeah. So though that housing development, however, how long is that? Well, the, right. the, 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 well, you asked when Middle Bush was. Well, it was okay. the 1600s. Okay, but, but, I'm that, sure of it. But, but the modern development. The, the modern development is is really all cut street is around the late 1800s, then and, and then so, beyond right. into this side of Middle Bush, 1940s, 1950s. Right, and 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 the lawyer, our attorney, pointed out to me. Well, it's been around 15 point. Seven three billion years, but <laughs> since the Big Bang. But you get my point. Uh, many of the people in the area moved in before Pizzo and Pizzo. Um, uh, now, the people on Gogan Way, that's since Pizzo and Pizzo, but there have been people there for a long time. We don't drive cars with leaded gas anymore. We don't drive cars without airbags. We don't drive cars without seatbelts anymore. Things have changed. I am not responsible for how Middle Bush, middle, this, the, um, the stadium around middle school was built. What I want to do is have this stadium park have as little of an impact as possible on the people around it, but still serve those people who want to use it. Um, I just happened to catch the gentleman from 115 Charles Street as I was saying that, and we will check on the lighting to, to, about that. And, and, I, and as I sat here, I, but you sooner or later will get down to me, and that was right, yes, my I manager's always, report. I always do get down to Oh, okay. I always get down to you by sent, giving you something to do. Um, we're, we also have to talk about who's going to pay for this. And if, and I know, you know, I don't have to be coy about it. I know Mr. Wright, Councilman Wright, wants the open space to pay for it. Well, that needs to be a discussion in front of the open space committee first. That's how we do it. So they have to weigh in on that. And then council can take their advice or not take their advice. But we do need to follow that protocol. Um, a little whispering to, between Councilman Wright and I is, he, he, his thinking is, it should, obviously it should meet the ordinance. I think it needs to go beyond the ordinance. The ordinance is basically that, that um, 60 decibels, which is roughly normal speech until 10 p.m. Well, I think that's, that's an annoying thing. I know a little bit about sound annoyance. I know a little bit about the disease tinnitus. And it's a funny thing about tinnitus. People 
are very annoyed by their tinnitus because they can't shut it off. But one way to treat it is by giving them a, a, a basically a hearing aid that makes noise. And you turn that hearing aid up to mask the noise. So you're turning the hearing aid up louder than the tinnitus noise, and people get relief from that. Why? Because they can control the noise. Noise you can't control is extremely annoying. So again, what I want to do is try to control the noise to minimize the impact. Now, th there is one other comment about the, the festival versus the park. The festival is three days long. The park is year-round. And initially we heard, and this is why I asked the question, there's going to be eight weekends that Pop Warner are using this, eight days. But now we hear that, well, soccer wouldn't mind being involved. And it, it's kind of a, if you build it, they will come. So again, let's put in a, if we're, I'm not saying let's put in a speaker system, but if we're going to put in a speaker system, we need to engineer it with minimum impact, and if it costs more money, then we need to do that. I'm not saying I'm for a speaker system, but what I'm saying is there's, there's going to be a speaker system. I want minimum impact, and I want a field test before the contract is signed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Councilman Ted Chase. Well, first of all, something completely different. The, the video of the raising of the barn at Rockingham, and this is uh, the central part of this is old beams from an old Dutch barn, and then those new beams also has been put together over the fall and winter, and it's now getting uh, covered up with siding. But uh, the video has been made and edited at great length of this construction. It is, uh, and it's really very interesting to see. And it's up on Channel 29, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon. And I suggest to everyone to watch it. Now, for Middlebush Park, I think we're a good way, long ways away from making a decision. Uh, I think that the people on Charles Street and Gauguin Way have a right to expect that they not hear this sound system. Uh, it may be that the sound system uh, can be implemented with <coughs> directional uh, very directional speakers uh, so that they won't hear it. Uh, we need either to learn how it is heard and not heard at East Brunswick and other places, or ideally to have a field test at Middle Push Park to see uh, how audible it would be. Uh, and until we know how much <coughs> how audible it, it would be, uh, since there are advantages to having one for the, uh, the Pop Warner games, uh, we, we can't make a decision, really. Um, or at least I can't. Uh, <clears throat> I do wonder, and of course the manager is speaking to someone else at this time, when are we going to get the buffering, the berms, and the evergreens and everything put in that are promised in the plan? They all, some have died. More were put in than the plan. And I'm working with the nursery right now to get those dead ones replaced. Good, good. But they'll take a while to grow up properly. But And I'd always said, why don't we just move the cedars that are in the way of the smaller fields and just transplant them. But no, no, that can't be done. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's everything. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. OK, thank you. Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. As I sat here and listened, the one word that kept coming into my mind was balance 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 we have to balance the needs of the community the, 
balance the needs of our youth. We have to balance the needs of the people that live in that area and make sure we don't degradate their quality of life. My recollection takes me back to when I was mayor. This chamber was filled up with people who did not want cell towers. When you look at where we are today, there's cell towers everywhere. People felt like, oh, you can't have cell towers coming into Franklin Township. It's going to degrade the quality of life here. So, and there, there were, there were, there were also a lot of complaints about we were rezoning the Davidson Avenue area over there to M2, which was a business development zone. There were people that lived in that area. They said, there's no way we want the, the, that development coming in our town. And we sat here and listened to complaint after complaint after complaint. But when you go over to Davidson Avenue, the palace is over there. We have hotels over there. We have a lot of businesses. Uh, uh, Ruby Tuesday. It, it's a, a very good tax rateable base for our Frank, for our Franklin Township. So I'm saying all that to say that um, everything we do, we we have to do it in in the sense of what's best for everyone concerned. And this this council is concerned about the, the entire township. I happen to live in that area. And I hear every Saturday and Sunday the firecrackers from the palace. You know, I hear them, I hear them, I hear them. I'm not saying I like it, but I hear it. But I know it's, it's a balanced situation because there are people who are celebrating. They're getting married. They're having celebrations. They want firecrackers. And I just say, oh, that's just wonderful. So we, some, someone made the comment that we, we, we are a very diverse community and we have to coexist in the best way possible. And I do sympathize uh, with the, the residents that live there, and we, we definitely are going to make sure that we do our due diligence and conduct the research we need to do to make sure we get the best optimal sound system over there. I can't imagine putting in a park in this day and age and not having a sound system, so we just need to make sure we have the right one that will be, be the best for everybody. So we just need to uh, be good neighbors, good community citizens and, and work together on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Rajiv Prasad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I ditto what uh, Councilwoman Francois just said. Uh, we have to find balance. And, you know, being an at-large uh, council person where I represent the whole town and I've got to look at the total perspective and it's all the residents and what's in the greatest good for everybody so in that sense we have to balance it and that's how we ju make our judgments and uh, in this case it is a sensitive topic and we've got to find the balance as uh, Councilwoman Francois said uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have to also uh, do our due diligence and we will find whatever best system we can. Uh, so uh, it's the jury's, uh, we're not decided on it. And so we'll do our homework and then make a decision. So that's as far as the uh, speakers are concerned. And I ditto what uh, our Deputy Mayor said about the budget. There's been a lot of work and effort that has gone into it. And uh, we'll support the, the, uh, the budget as it stands. And we've done our, as residents, taxpayers, we, we know what everybody's going through. And we keep that in mind. And we don't take that fiduciary responsibility lightly. Uh, one comment about the Somerset Presbyterian Church. Uh, it's not only they had a, a preschool, but they also used to host uh, the uh, Boy Scouts there. And my, my son, yeah, they still do. And so they've been good corporate citizens, I mean, uh, of, of Franklin. I go there to vote, and so they make their facility open uh, to, for us to be able to be good citizens. So I commend them as, as members of our community and what they have done, and congratulate them for their 50th anniversary. Uh, as far as the Lebanese festival is concerned, uh, I thought we had worked out most of the uh, issues. Uh, 
uh, in that they had arranged to have parking at the Pine Grove School and they were busing people over to uh, the, uh, the festival, number one. Number two, of course, uh, you know, we could institute some kind of a resident only parking with a permit system, if at all I possible. Can't be done, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I've the just Department of Transportation doesn't allow for that. Okay. So we, we, that was a good try. Uh, it was a good try. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. The manager shot me down on that one. <laughs> okay. But we can enforce the sound ordinance if it is not to be by complied order. with. And so and the, the, sound, the sound ordinance needs to be complied with, absolutely. And, and the, the, the church does, in fact, hire a police officer to be there. And, I, and so I'm, I'm quite surprised, and, I, and I'll certainly have a discussion with the chief of police, but I know that when I was with the police department and I was the, the officer responsible for the hiring of those police officers, one of the mandates was that the hours of operation be strictly adhered to because of the noise complaints that had ha happened in the past. I was also the one who instituted the one side of the street parking that was done for safety purposes because in fact these are public streets and and I'll just you know remind everyone that everyone has the right to park on a public street. I mean, we don't reserve parking in front of our own homes simply because it's in front of our home. This is a three-day event as was discussed and and so the police department was very diligent about parking here to corner signs so that they, that they did not uh, impede the view at, at intersections and the, the one side of the street is like we said a temporary thing it's also done uh, you know there's a number of, of signs I know I've pounded the post in myself for St. Matthias where we do the same thing where parking is only permitted on one side of the road and that's for an entire week um, so so certainly there's there's a precedent there and that's how it's handled um, I like I said I'll speak with the chief of police again but I know that the traffic bureau over the last several years has been very diligent about enforcing the parking regulations as it, re it relates to this particular festival okay and uh, no thank you uh, mr. manager and uh, hopefully they will have a good uh, festival and uh, I know the, the the Reverend Father, you know, at one time he came here and waited for six, eight hours, and I felt really bad uh, that we did not accommodate him. And, uh, you know, he, he has been very open and uh, is a good neighbor and wants to do the right thing, and I respect that. And let us try and work this through that uh, it, it happens properly, and I'm well aware of, uh, you know, festivals that uh, you know have gone to other venues like the Garden State Exhibit Center and still had problems <laughs> with parkings and at that time I got I was in California and I got calls uh, you know at uh, close to midnight in California which was like 3 a.m. here and they were shutting down an Indian festival and the organizers were calling me and I was calling the manager and yeah and the manager had to handle it but they shut the place down at that time because it was a hazard and I agreed with them and so public safety is is number one but at the same time we will work this through and uh, you know so it'll happen uh, and to Mr. LaCourt all I have to say is thank you for all your effort for the Memorial Day Parade and organizing it and, uh, you know, the 70th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, I can only thank the vets for the freedoms we enjoy and we will celebrate that. And on a personal note, uh, I think uh, the past few years I haven't been able to walk, but this time I hope by then I will be marching in the parade. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman James Vassanella. Okay. Uh, congratulations to Presbyterian Church. They do, and I was uh, honored to be there for a Eagle Scout Court of Honor recently and been there for many things over the years. They may not be the biggest church in town, but they have make a significant impact and have always afforded uh, themselves to the community, whether it's a Boy Scout troop or a uh, or the voting uh allowing people to vote there, et cetera. So congratulations. Uh, recently, St. Matthias did their 50th. 
things are we're all, we're all getting on in age here and things are been around town longer than you sometimes uh, remember at first the festival um, uh, councilwoman Francois said balance you know the festival I, I know people who live in a the neighborhood there some are here tonight um, I, I live only six seven blocks and I hear the festival so you know it's again it's way in the, the situation I, I think they're a victim of their own success in a way because quite frankly I, I, I do think they should look for a new venue I think that they have such a great festival and so much to offer and so many people interested it's simply outgrown the location so I hope that that could be something to look f towards next year. I know they probably, you know, there's a certain thing about having it there at their home base, but maybe th there is a chance to, to bring it somewhere else. But um, uh, it, is, it is managed. The police do take care of things. But I've been by there. Honestly, there's organized chaos. There is chaos. There's, there's, my concern is safety. Um, obviously noise and, and, and quality of life but but honestly my bigger concern is is safety and and I have seen situations where things get a little chaotic and a lot of times towards as it gets later on and things are loud and people are getting rushing in and out all I can do is is uh, uh, put my faith in in our manager and our police chief that they will be uh, extra diligent and if it takes giving a few people tickets because I'm sure 99 percent of people who attend that are wonderful people but I'm sure you might have some people who you know, someone used the word arrogant, and I'm saying arrogant, but if someone needs to be given a ticket, they, give, they should be given a ticket. So maybe we could find that balance, whatever the manager, police chief, to be extremely strict because it's for the safety of the church, the people, the residents, the people coming. God forbid something happened. Councilman, all I'll say is there's a reason why those officers in the traffic bureau get assigned to the traffic bureau. I don't think you have to do much convincing to get them to issue summons. Well, I, I didn't mean that. I just... <laughs> you trained them well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying that, you know, we, we, you, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so hopefully that we'll, we'll be back here smiling about this in a few weeks. But seriously, um, and the people who, the neighbors that are there and are here tonight and other ones that aren't, um, within reason, exercise your right. If someone's blocking your driveway, they should be ticketed or towed. It is free parking, public parking, but not for hydrants, not in front of, you know, not even four feet in front of part of a driveway. So it's that gray area, I think, that gets people riled up. And, l and let's just hope this year could be a, uh, I don't know, a transitional year to where everybody's more considerate of the other side. And, and maybe the church will look for a, a new site um, based on their success. Anyway, quickly, uh, uh, this obviously the situation with, with Middle Bush Park is, is, is up in the air. Just my opinion, but I think a park of that magnitude should have some audio capability. But audio capability and a system blasting out the neighborhood, obviously back to what Councilman Sherman said, we have to find some balance. And eight or ten weekends a year for some football games, probably not a big deal, but soccer was mentioned. Look, what happens? We get a lacrosse league, which probably is just a matter of time in this town. We may have requests to use that system every weekend all year. Uh, obviously, winter months, there's not as much going on. But the point is, we need to, I feel we should have some kind of audible system, but really move forward extremely cautiously. I don't want to repeat the comments that were made earlier, but we got exercise technology and long-term planning. And um, maybe we could field test the system this Pop Warner season coming up. That gives us a few months. Maybe there's a system or some aspects of a system we could field test to some degree and then look to decide over the winter and put in a more permanent system next year. I want to drag this on for years and years, but obviously it's a very sensitive issue. And technology, we're not, we're not aware of. We're, no one up here, I believe, is fully aware of the technology. One last comment. Um, Memorial Day. I don't think we have another council meeting before Memorial Day. Do we not? No, we do not. We do not. So I know it sounds cliche and people mention every year, but the reason we're able to be here having these discussions, hopefully friendly, sometimes a little heated, is because of uh, a, a lot of people, men and women, that have, uh, let's just say, made a lot of sacrifice to give us this opportunity. And with that, I want to briefly mention, please go out support the Memorial Day Parade. Um, I, on a side note, had the honor, the opportunity to go to the battleship New Jersey, 
which uh, I was in complete awe. Um, go, I won't bore you with all the details. Go home, Google it. Uh, it's in uh, the port of Camden. I was able actually actually able to go with a cup, my son's Cub Scout group, and we stayed overnight and slept in the bunks. And let me tell you, <laughs> I, I know most of the adults, and I believe most of those kids who came out of there the next day, because you stay overnight and actually play out like you would have due to colors on the deck with raising the flags and everything the military did. If you don't, if you can't appreciate what the sacrifices people have done for this, this country and, 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 and our veterans to get us where we are today, go spend the night on that ship. And as wonderful as it was, imagine spending months and months with 3,000 people. Um, point is, um, there's a lot of history there. If you get an opportunity, visit it. And if you don't, just find a way to appreciate um, and honor um, the sacrifices of, of the veterans of this country. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Vornlocker? Any? I have just one announcement, and it won't be about Middlebush Park. Um, apparently, the good councilman down there at the end, Councilman Kramer, forgot the hallmark event of the spring in East Millstone, uh, the Canal Road Walk and Roll 2014. So I will be uh, you know, sure to bring this up. and. And, and it's advertised on our website for anyone who's interested. Uh, it's to enjoy a day with friends and family along the scenic Delaware and Raritan Canal. Uh, we will be closing Canal Road from East Millstone, uh, the Market Street, uh, Elm Street intersection, all the way down to Butler Road. Um, it's advertised as no cars, no traffic, and no noise. Um, and it is sponsored by the Township of Franklin. It is this Sunday, May 18th. Um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Should it rain on Sunday, it will be able to follow. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, Sunday, June 8th. So this Sunday, it is supposed to be sunny. Uh, I know that because it's my son's college graduation on Sunday, so I won't be in East Millstone. But uh, it should be a fun day for everyone who participates. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Brian Regan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so who would have known that the night that the budget was going to be introduced would have two hours of conversation from the public without actually comment on the budget itself. Um, so um, someone said something? I must have Oh, okay. I, I stepped out. Okay. So the one person. Thank you. Um, so, so I guess the, the only words I would offer tonight is words of, um, of balance comes to mind because we're going to go through this discussion again uh, when we actually you know when it comes up and a resolution is in place to do this um, I like uh, Councilman Kramer were um, confused by some comments made um, certainly for someone to get up here and, and to state that that no one other than their organization is doing something for kids in this town is just wrong it, it really is it's just inaccurate um, we take a lot of effort in our budgets to allocate funds to our recreation. We have had many heated discussions up here about what to do about summer programs, uh, fees, how to reimburse fees, or waive fees for children that cannot, uh, for their families can, that cannot afford summer programs. So, um, I, you know, I, I plead when people come up here to make the case for what you want and offer your opinion. Please do not overstate it. You know, I, I have two children that have grown 27 and 24. My being proud of them in anything they've done has never been tied to a loudspeaker or not. It just wasn't there. It, so I can respect the opinions of people who want to experience a sound system in a park because I, for the most part, believe that the park should have a sound system. Um, being very respectful to the residents around there and, and their needs. I do not believe this council is going to find a solution that is going to satisfy 100% of the people who do not want to hear anything and 100% of the people who want to have a sound, speak, sound system. I believe that the solution that will eventually come, there will be some people dissatisfied with that solution. Um, that's just the harsh reality of it. What I do think is this council will work hard um, in discussions to try to come up with a solution that can be the best given the situation. Um, 
hopefully, you know, the, the goal will not to be swing this pendulum to one side or to the other side to find somewhere in the middle, but that middle, whatever it is, is not going to make both sides of this discussion 100% happy. Um, so again, when we come back and discuss that, I would just ask that everyone be mindful of those comments of what they, what they come up to offer their opinions on and support of with being mindful that there are other opinions that may not match yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And uh, now for my comments. Uh, since it was mentioned about the, the skate park, uh, I remember years ago I was never, I wasn't against the skate park per se, but way back then I wanted the park to be designed before we dropped a skate park in there, which might be in the way of other things that was part of it. And just, just as a quick example, reiterating what's been said before about council doing things. Councilwoman Francois and I were on the council years ago. We allocated $3 million for Naaman Williams, put in a pool and a basketball court and recreation, all those kinds of things. So we have had that in our minds. So for me, I, I don't want this framed as a uh, recreation, Pop Warner, soccer versus the homeowners. I think it could be everyone. My basic philosophy, I've said this for years, is the residents get top priority. However, the people who live there are residents, and the participants, coaches, parents, and Pop Warner soccer, et cetera, they're residents also. So everyone's got the priority. We need recreation, and we need peaceful enjoyment of your home. And I, I think we can have it um, both ways. And I, I truly believe the, the residents are pro-kid and pro-sports. They just want quiet enjoyment of their home. And I truly believe the coaches, the parents, the kids are pro-neighbors and pro-peaceful enjoyment of homes, too. And I think some items were fleshed out here, maybe how the sound system goes if, we indeed, we, uh, we do adopt it. So uh, we will. This is, again, preliminary. If we go forward, there I'm... Um, Sure, there will be multiple bids probably on the sound system. Maybe we will ask them to be more creative and ask them how we, uh, how sound, if we go forward, can be on the field. Since it is supposed to go in two different directions at once, it seems to me that it can be not disturbing the other team. So maybe we can ask them how to do it um, so that the people can hear it, but it's not going out. Um, over to the residents, because I think both both need it. It's not something we're going to change and implement right away, but I think it is something we probably will, we, won't, we don't want to drag you out, that's unfair. We should make a decision to go or not go pretty quickly. And then uh, if we go, you know, what's working with everyone to the best, best uh, of everyone's <laughs> situation. And that's all the comments I have. And so now what we're going to do is, as before, go into executive session. Again, that's usually at the end of the meeting. But we're going to go into executive session. Again, executive session is when the council can meet in private. And again, it's usually a specific item. Not usually. It is specific items like personnel, attorney, client privilege, contract negotiations. When the subject of that executive session no longer needs to be made private, the minutes of those meetings will be made public. I'm not sure how long this will last. Often I'll give it an estimate. It could be five or ten minutes. If discussion ensues, it could be an hour. And after that, we're going to come back and finish the rest of the business of the meeting. So, bear with me a moment. Okay, so we have our Resolution. Ah, pardon me. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay. So we have our resolution presented to the Township Council for executive session. It's uh, resolution 14 216. It's to authorize executive session for contract negotiations. That's our senior managers and blue collar supervisors. Personnel, municipal court office. Litigation, Canal Walk, Homeowners Association versus the Township, and Acquisition of Property, specifically on Bennett's Lane, those four items. This is presented to the Township Council for
for adoption. Is there a motion for the resolution for executive? So session? moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, Ms. McCarthy, please poll the council on the resolution for executive session, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. So we're going to go into executive session. Um, I guess the, the, there will be nothing to film while we do that, and then we'll come out and continue the meeting. So we are going into executive session. Okay, is there is the motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. We were in executive session for the items of contract negotiations, senior managers and blue co collar supervisors, personnel, municipal court office, litigation, Canal Walk Homeowners Association versus Township of Franklin, and acquisition of property, Bennett's Lane. Okay, uh, those are the items we did discuss. Uh, we moved the agenda around a little bit. We are now at item number seven. Resolutions voted on separately. And um, I'm going to ask our attorney, we can do these all together. That's yes. council's choice. Okay. Okay, thank you. So if item 7A and B, resolution 14 217, authorize execution of Ask Me 2426 Blue Collar Supervisors contract. 7B, Resolution 14-218, Authorize the Execution of AFSME 2426 Senior Managers Contract. And C, Resolution 14219, Authorize Settlement Agreement, Canal Walk Homeowners Association. Is there a motion for all three, if that's okay? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please pull the council on resolutions in item 7, 14-217, 218, and 219, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. We already did item 8, 9, and 10. We are... Um, Skipping item 11, I believe, correct? And we're yeah. going to next meeting. We'll come back to that next meeting. Uh, item 13A, we did, yeah. which is the sound system, Middle Bush Park. Jumping along real quickly here. Okay. Leads us to 13B, Cable Franchise Application Renewal Process. Um, Deputy Mayor Regan, Brian Regan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I asked this item to be put on so that um, our attorney. Uh, Mr. Renon can talk a little about the upcoming uh, cable franchise, uh, the cable franchise application renewal process. Uh, the reason that I, I asked him to do this is one of our residents um, was talking to um, to a, a, a provider. I'll just I won't name them, but uh, as to trying to negotiate rates, and they were basically told that they were being blocked from. Um, being the franchisee in the town due to some um, fee structure and the fact that we didn't want them. And I knew I know that that's not true. So uh, I wanted to make sure that our attorney has the opportunity to kind of educate both our residents <coughs> and, and council members on this process because the harsh reality is though it's a renewal application, uh, if we don't renew Comcast, um, there could be some significant issues to our residents. So at this time, I'll turn just, it over to Mr. Renault. <coughs> just two, two very quickly things, and <coughs> excuse me, and, and the night, and it's it's getting pretty late. Um, I've prepared two documents that um, that will circulate the council long before the you'll, you'll have in the next day or so. One is frequently asked questions, so that you, you get a flavor of questions that I've seen asked at other public hearings by members of the public, and, and the answers for it. There are also uh, I've also provided you um, 
I will, you'll have in the next day or so a memo um, that I sent uh, actually over to Bob tonight that details the process from here on out, which basically involves a public hearing, um, uh, a vote to, uh, to agree to extend, to, to grant their application for an extension and then a negotiation of the final terms. And I have in my memo the things we can or we can't negotiate. And, you know, it's relatively limited, but there are things we can talk about. Um, the, the, the other issue is this issue of Verizon telling people that they're not allowed to come into Franklin for some, something that the Township of Franklin did. Verizon Fios has a statewide cable franchise. They're the first ones to get it. They, that gives them the authorization without negotiation or the permission of a governing body to go in and build out their system in any town they want to build it out. They've built out, um, I guess, 60 or so towns that they, that they promised that they would build out, and they basically have stopped. So um, it's got nothing to do with, you know, if they say it's the fee structure, that might mean that they don't think that it's profitable enough to come in and do something. But, you, you know, we don't have the ability to deny a cable franchise renewal and hope that Verizon comes in. And frankly, you don't really have the ability to deny the franchise renewal um, you, the BPU will never let you do it. So, and, and if you did, that would mean literally if you were successful that Comcast would turn off their cable system in Franklin. That means nobody would have cable because they own the cables in the ground. It's not like somebody else would step in and take over their cables. So, so that's not really, those kind of things really aren't, you know, because the History Channel is not in the premium package, that isn't a reason not to renew the cable franchise. <laughs> So, um, so it's you know best is to take a look at the memo. The the other thing is there is a um, the BPO has a lot of good information here. If anybody wants, I can forward to them <clears throat> the guide to municipalities on cable renewals, which literally has a section in it about things you can't put in your ordinance. Um, yeah, you know things like setting fees or changing what tier the baking channel is on, and those kind of things. The things that people ask you to do all the time. Um, Free cable to council members. Free cable to council members. Um, um, so, um, and once again, once we all have, have all that information, we're going to have the public hearing. I don't think it's going to be June 5th, though, right? Because the person from Comcast couldn't be here. Right, it's going to be the 24th. Of June, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll have a couple of meetings between now and then. If somebody wants to put it back on the agenda to ask questions, we can do that. But you'll have all the information you need. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Merlot. You're here. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anything else about that? Okay. So now we go to item number 14. There, okay. Foreshadow. This is, there's no typographical error. <laughs> Approval of 2003 work session regular and special meeting minutes. As a, to quote a former mayor of Cincinnati, Ms. McCarthy, what's going on here? <laughs> Well, first of all, I didn't come here until 2004. Okay, this is before your time. <laughs> this is right. before me. Um, yeah. In response to an OPA request, we found that there were some minutes that were never drafted and approved in 2003. So we looked through the office. There are no notes, no recordings, nothing. So the best that we can do is to put together the minutes by saying who was on council at the time, put the agenda in and put in whatever ordinances or resolutions were adopted and what was discussed according to the agenda. And each set of minutes has a disclaimer explaining so if someone 100 years from now <laughs> looks at this, they'll understand what, why it's different from everything else. So at this point, we just need to have them approved so that they become official. And I'll ask Mr. Renone, uh, usually if we're absent, we abstain. Can you tell me how we can work this one? I, I think that all, all you're doing is what the clerk just said, which is that you're formally adopting minutes of a meeting and, and essentially certifying that those actions were taken. Um, the clerk's office has reviewed the records, and that's what it is. So you're just really putting it on the public record. There's nobody that is um, testifying as to anything other than that. Okay, so all council members can vote on this? Yes. Okay, so presented to the Township Council are following minutes from 2003. Township Council Special Meeting, July 21st, 2003. Township Council Regular Meeting, September 9th, 2003. Township Council Special Meeting, September 16th, 2003. Township Council Work Session, November 6th, 2003. 
Township Council regular meeting November 13th, 2003, Township Council work session December 2nd, 2003, and Township Council special meeting December 17th, 2003. Is there a motion for approval of these minutes? So moved. Second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, Councilman Kramer, please. So um, the September 9th meeting, 2003, is a very special meeting, and I have an amendment to that. Uh, you probably <laughs> recall that meeting. That's when uh, Mr. Hoover and I handed out hundreds of leaflets and um, filled this council chamber with people um, for a, uh, well, it was a, um, it was a rally against high taxes. Mr. Renone probably recalls the meeting, too. I, I remember when you apologized to me. <laughs> uh, not during that meeting. <laughs> so we could be that in a minute. And, and I don't remember that. Ever. <laughs> that one time? Mm -hmm. But, um, so I... Go ahead, Councilman Kramer, go ahead. So, uh, that he thought he was I certainly wrong didn't and he was apologize mistaken. during that meeting. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I would like to amend it under the public comments to, during the public session, and I emailed the clerk this, um, during the public session, there was standing room only with overflow into the lobby, period. Dozens of people spoke either against taxes or in support of the administration. I did that with as little editorializing as possible. And then I also recall council decided to um, skip council comments that night. So if that could... Um, oh, I'm ready to make my council comments for that night now, though. <laughs> no, no. <It's> okay. <laughs> Mr. Regan was there, as I recall. In attendance, I was sitting about, I think, the third or second seat over in that first row. And uh, so, I did not. So I move to amend the agenda, uh, the uh, minutes, as four mentioned. Oh man, I that was a big meeting not to have minutes. That was an important meeting to me. Yeah, absolutely. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, Okay. All in favor of amending the agenda, sorry, amending the minutes, minutes as stated by Councilman Kramer, please say aye. Apology. Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. We're going to put apology in all the minutes just in case. Right after I okay. You on tax Any other discussion? I remember correctly that night. Okay. <laughs> Ms. McCarthy, please pull the council on the minutes and I will re reiterate once more. This is before Ms. McCarthy arrived here. Wow. Uh, Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? I think I heard my name, yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. We're now at item number 15 on the agenda approval of the warrants. The warrants are the bills we pay, warrants in the amount of $8,256,000. $355.16. Right. Uh, On May 13th, 2014, are presented to the Township Council for payment. Is there a motion to pay the warrants as read? Second. Moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please pull the Council on payment of the warrants. Councilman no. Chase? Yes. Councilwoman oh, Francois? I'm out. No, I'm out. How much? Oh. Yes. oh, was there a comment? I'm sorry. No, I just want to know amount. Oh, it's eight million two hundred fifty-six thousand three hundred fifty-five dollars and sixteen cents. Pardon me. Are you writing a check, <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine. Yes. Councilman Brisson. Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan. Yes. yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Okay, motion is carried. Now comes the calendar year 2014 municipal budget. There are five pieces here. First, we're going to vote on whether we can read the budget by title. Otherwise, we can read the whole thing that ha Councilman Chase has. Uh, two, we can have, we'll have the public hearing. We'll hear from the public on the budget. Three, we will amend the budget. We'll uh, touch that quickly when we get there. Number four, the um, uh, there's a quick little add-on. And again, we'll have that regarding the accumulated sick and vacation leave, and number five, we'll vote on the actual budget. So, first piece, item number 16A on the agenda, 
uh, uh, yes vote means we can read the budget by title as opposed to the whole thing. It's resolution 12-182, authorized to read budget by title only. That's presented to the Town Township Council for adoption. Is there a motion for so resolution 14-22? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. So if we vote no, you have to read the entire budget. <laughs> yeah. Well, the yeah, that would be Anne-Marie. <laughs> oh, then okay. I don't have a copy. <laughs> That's an easy. She has, I do. She has it memorized, I think. <laughs> Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Next, we have the public hearing on the municipal budget as advertised. Is there a motion to open the meeting for a public hearing on calendar year 2014 municipal budget as advertised? So moved. Move. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. This meeting is open for a public discussion on the calendar year 2014 municipal budget as advertised. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Mr. Mayor upon seeing no one coming forward to make comment, uh, I make a motion to close the public session. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Thank you very much for the public hearing. We now come to um, item 16C, resolution 14-221, to amend the calendar year 2014 municipal budget. Um, is that Mr. Mr. Hodgelick? I, I, or, there, or there, there is a, a technical uh, reason to amend the budget, and Mr. Hodgelick will explain it to you all. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yeah, very quickly, uh, the state reviewed your budget and had come back with some comments, and uh, they asked us just to move uh, an item or two of revenue from one category to another category. It's, it's just a form over substance kind of issue, and the, the amendment also includes uh, $13,000 of additional grant funds that have been received by the township. So it's... Uh, it's a, just a perfunctory amendment to please it, the state with the, the, the form of the budget. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're so, not going to tell us where we're moving it to? Well, I, I mean, for example, the, the one re revenue item that, was, uh, that we received from the Franklin Fire Districts, uh, $90,000 for the inspectors, uh, it was included in the interlocal government um, interlocal agreement section of the budget. However, we're not providing for the expenditure outside a cap on the appropriation side, so they asked us to move to the special item of revenue section as opposed to the interlocal section of the revenue. Okay, it's, that's it's clarifying. Technicality. Yeah. 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 It's all technical. <laughs> it really is. That's why I didn't want to okay, say it. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, if nothing else, is there, re is there a motion for resolution 14-221? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. McCarthy, please pull the counts on item 16C. Resolution 14-221, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman <laughs> Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. <laughs> we now come to 16D, Resolution 14-222. This has been added since uh, the original agenda. Uh, regarding calendar year 2014 municipal budget and the township reserve for accumulated sick and vacation this presented to the township council mr. Hodgelick yes mr. mayor members council again this is re with respect to the state's review um, the township has been setting aside the funds for accumulated sick and vacation or compensated absences over the years uh, the, the state a couple years ago or more than a couple years ago actually codified how that should take place and uh, what they really like to see is this money parked in what's called a uh, trust fund uh, which is uh, by a dedication by a rider uh, doing that type of process restricts the use of these funds for only compensated absence and, and compensated absences and should you ever actually want to use it for other than that purpose you actually would have to go down to the local finance board and petition them for the use of the to use those funds otherwise as they're designated mm -hmm. uh they asked us to to provide for the dedication by rider uh, uh authorization <laughs> this evening and i said there's no way this council is going to approve this you know just just by by your request so we've, we've asked them, and they agreed to give you it through to uh, June 30th to review the issue and come back to them whether or not you want to have it actually, you know, put into a dedication by a rider or, in fact, have those funds be more flexible uh, for your use in future years. 
So this will be going to the Finance Oversight Committee, and I think we'll be coming out with a recommendation uh, next month. Okay. Andy, can I just ask a very quick question? Is this a trick? And the reason I'm asking that question is because there's legislation in Trenton that would essentially eliminate this obligation. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think it's just... You know, and then it's going to be in a fund where they're right. going to... Exactly. Then we're going to make their permission take to take it out of the fund. I don't think there's any nefarious uh, workings here. It's just that I think they just finally decided that they wanted to, you know, have the township comply with the, uh, the uh, code. So, um, so it'll, it'll be on the end of the month financial oversight committee uh, agenda. Just a quick Can question. Deputy Mayor So I, I assume once, it, once the, we settle on this, by the way, yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't call for... A reintroduction or no. any public no. hearing on the budget? No, it, it really has no. It, it has no bearing on the budget as it's being okay. right. presented. This is money that's in reserve that they just yep. want in a in a dedicated trust. That's really what it amounts to. Just want a clarification. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so item 16D, which is resolution 14-222, regarding calendar year 2014 municipal bowl budget and townships reserve for accumulated sick and vacation. <laughs> This is presented to the Township Council for adoption. Is there a motion for this resolution? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. McCarthy, please call the Council on item 16D, resolution 14-222, please. Councilman Chase? Yeah. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Brasson? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Now this is 16E, this is the actual budget. Resolution 14-223, adopt the calendar year 2014 municipal budget. This is presented to the Township Council for adoption. Is there a motion for this resolution? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, if no discussion, Ms. Ms. McCarthy, please call the Council on item 16E, resolution 14-223, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? No. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Deputy Mayor Regan? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Next we come to our two ordinance hearings. And an nope. ordinance goes into law after two votes. On the first one, it's introduced, and on the second vote, uh, we have an ordinance here and where people can speak on that particular ordinance. And if it passes the second time, it goes into law. So the first one of our second hearings, uh, pardon me, is our public hearing and second reading, is 17A, Ordinance 4059-14, an ordinance to amend the code of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, Chapter 46, Personnel Policies, Section 46-12, Medical Insurance Coverage, Subsection C, flexible spending accounts, and D, cash stipend in lieu of health insurance coverage. This is basically if two spouses are employed by Franklin Township, yeah, this only one will get health care because they're both covered, and there is no extra stipend paid to the other spouse. Is there a motion to, um, pardon me, the township attorney has approved the affidavit of publication. The public hearing is in order. Is there a motion to open the meeting for public hearing on this ordinance? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Meeting is open for public discussion on this particular ordinance. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. See no one come forward, Mayor. Motion to close the public board. Seconded. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. Public hearing is closed for this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion for final passage of the ordinance and publication in accordance with law? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please pull the counts on item 17A, ordinance 4059-14, please. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Mayor Levine? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, motion <coughs> is carried. Oh, this is tight. Thank you. We come to the second and final of our ordinance second readings. It's 17B on the agenda, ordinance 4060 14, an ordinance amending the municipal code of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey. More particularly, Code <laughs> Chapter 23, Hamilton really? Street. Business Community Special Improvement District, Code Section 23-10, 
Hamilton Street Advisory Board subsection B terms. Uh, we uh, revised the structure of the Hamilton Street Business Board. We appointed them members last meeting, and this fixes the terms of the people in audience of there. It'll basically be three-year terms, but um, since we're starting, some will be one year, some two, and some three, and I believe after that, they'll all be three-year terms, and this fixes that. The Township Attorney has approved the affidavit of publication, and a public hearing is in order. Is there a motion to open the meeting for a public hearing on this ordinance? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Meeting is open for a public discussion on this particular ordinance. Anyone interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor, seeing no one come forward, I make a motion that we close public discussion. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion is carried. Thank you for the public hearing on this ordinance. Is there a motion for final passage of the ordinance and publication in accordance with law? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please pull the counts on item 17B, ordinance 4060-14, please. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Kramer. Yes. Mayor Levine. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Motion is carried. Now we come to item 18, ordinances on introduction and first reading. We do not have any today. So we come to our consent agenda. Consent agenda are items of the basically routine nature upon which we can, uh, council can vote at one time. Is any council person's prerogative to take something off for a separate vote? We have items 19A through 19 a, D, the last three, A, B, A, C, and A, D have been added since the original um, agenda. So is there an, um, is there a, sorry, let me see. There. Motion for pass. Yeah, what, what became, sorry, A, A on the new agenda, I think that wasn't on the original one either. Okay, so is there a motion for the consent agenda? Motion, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Ms. McCarthy, please pull the council on the consent agenda. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Kramer. Yes. Mayor Levine. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Okay. Motion is carried. Um, next we have item number 20, old business, 2014 board and commission vacancies. Is there a nomination for any vacancies? If not, uh, we go to item number 21, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion is carried. We are adjourned. Have a good memorial day.